Passions Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the soap opera passions. I am your regular host, Latara, back today with a brand new guest host. I'm so excited. Y'all don't even know. Welcome, Maria. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm so excited. Look, everybody, you can see that Maria has like legit Passions merch from the NBC store. Circa, what year was this that you got this shirt? Uh, whenever the disaster passion storyline happened, I don't, I don't I, we're know. not even there yet. So, future <laughs> 2004, stuff, but, maybe. Yeah, no, I've been collecting merch like passion hat, fisherman's hat. I have autographs, I literally have a whole book of like autographs from the cast because I would go and do the signings. Like, I've been slowly showing you a couple things, but I got stuff, I got signed books. <laughs> I've seen you've sent me so many things or show me so many things already that I know is a treasure trove. And then on top of just like not just passion stuff, because she has a an autographed picture of Allison Sweeney, everybody, from uh if you don't know, Sammy Brady from Days of Our Lives, who's my favorite soap opera character of all time. <laughs> so I'm like jealous. Maria seems is is Maria so cool. She went to Comic Con last week, right? Did you meet anybody fun last week? Um, I didn't actually like do any of the interactions with actors because honestly, because of the strike, there weren't a lot of people there. Oh, right. Yeah, there wouldn't be a lot of like people to do the meet and greets. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. think about that. Were the tickets cheaper? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Seems like they should it be, I feel like. But still worth it for me because it's one of my things that I love to do. I, I yeah. do cosplays. And so I love to go over there and dress up and just interact with other fans. And one of the biggest things this year was the Barbie movie. So a oh. lot of people came dressed as Barbie. And normally there's like a little insider joke that happens at Comic-Con with different movies. Like when Mandalorian started, everyone's like, this is the way. And like, like everyone will reply and stuff. This year, when you saw Barbie, you would totally be like, hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Yeah. And she hi, was Barbie. like, hi, Barbie. Yeah. Regardless I, if you were dressed as Barbie or not. Oh, yeah. 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 It would be All a right. lot of fun. But so we're going to get into episodes 546 through 550. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Because I've been messing up the numbers. Okay, so, but before we do that, let's give big shout a big shout out to all of our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you to Munashe, Marcus, Breland, Lisa, Sid, Serana, Randall, Hannah, Camelia, Amanda, Monique, Samantha, Jeanette, Eric, Fantasia, Sean, S, Larissa, Maria, and Greg, Lo Greg Lopez Fitzgerald, Lisa, Jessica Jean, and our latest and newest um, patron, Laura. Thank you so, 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 so much for becoming a patron. And thank you all for being patrons. I love you. I really do. I, I, I know that, that really just came out, but I like really appreciate the the um community that we we have and when we do our watch parties it's so i have like it's honestly like the highlight of my month <laughs> i, I love so it i love fun. it I, I love those watch parties being able to talk to people about a show that's like 20 years old it's amazing yeah i love it so um thank you all for becoming patrons and remember we have a, another watch party coming up this week and which once this episode is up on the patreon that will be tomorrow and um also halloween party on halloween tuesday the 31st so come i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil it for anybody but i already know what maria's coming as and it's amazing <laughs> like it's, you are not gonna want to miss it so with that said i think it's time we get into these episodes and talk about this oh. week it was a lot it was like a lot this week i was yes shocked at how many notes i haven't taken this many pages of notes in a long time. I I typically, I'm I've recently I've been down to like four pages, three and a half pages. I'm, I uh -huh. took like seven pages of notes today. So, y'all buckle oh. in, strap in. For <laughs> yep, here we go. Quite a ride. So we're gonna start with Teresa. Which before we get into this, I want a disclaimer very quickly, Maria. In the Teresa v. Gwen debate, where do you fall? I am completely 100% Team Gwen. Ah, can you even believe it? <laughs> I know. I and, and believe me, I am well aware that I'm in the minority. 
but I stick into my guns and I'm not alone. There is a community out there. There are people who do love and appreciate Gwen. There are people who love and appreciate Gwen. I just had not met one in my 20 years since I've seen this show until I met you, but I'm glad I've met you. You gave me a new perspective, I will say. It's nice to hear a, a different perspective. I'm still very firmly team Teresa, always will be, but- Which is great, and you should, but always. But I do appreciate, I do appreciate the, the, the way you <laughs> stand 10 toes down for Gwen. <laughs> No matter what. So let's talk about, oh Lord, y'all, let's talk about Teresa. Bless this girl's heart. I would try to take it easy on her. Yeah, you try it. <laughs> listen, I I said last week that I, I did give her a little grief last week about this whole situation about like, why did you even go to Bermuda in the first place? Ridiculous. Um, But she did. So we have to deal with, we have to deal with it. Um, So we pick up this week and Ch uh, Chad and Ethan have gone off to get ready for this wedding that they're going to have at the 24 hour chapel. Meanwhile, Whitney, Teresa and Julian are all still like at Sheridan and Luis's hotel room hanging out. Um, so Whitney says to Teresa, who's freaking out, like she just does not seem right, this girl. She's like, what is this trouble you've gotten yourself into? Because Teresa has told her she's in big trouble. It's huge, but she can't tell her what it is. So Whitney's asking her about it. And she says, well, on a scale of you spent too much money on clothes to Ethan's paternity, how big is it? And she goes, bigger. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> and we've already seen, we know it is bigger. Oh yeah, we know it's way bigger. She says it's bigger, but she she declines to explain why and like whatever. Um. Oh, I you know what? I skipped ahead. Ethan's still there. Whatever. Ethan's still there. Ethan tells Teresa at this point. So Teresa walks back across the room. I, this is why I got confused about where they were. Is because who has conversations like this? hushed conversations on either sides of the room in one room where all everybody's together when mm -hmm. like there's clear clearly something weird going on here but um anyway ethan uh tells teresa that he wants to marry her tonight he won't take no for an answer teresa says i'm sorry we can't get married tonight we can't but she struggles to explain why when he says why can't why, why can't we get married and yeah. and uh julian then steps in to explain for her saying, oh, a girl, a girl like Teresa, her marriage means everything to her. I mean, she wouldn't want a, a thrown together wedding. Good for, she, she of course would want to get married in a church. She's a good Christian girl after all. <laughs> I will say though, that explanation is actually a good one by Julian. That man can think on his feet. Cause that was good. I'm like, bravo Julian, that's very believable. and. Someone like Teresa, who's very traditional, that works. Like Ethan, just let's go. Okay, I get it. I back off. Can we go? Can we circle back a little bit though? Because I know you talked about it a little in last week's episode. It's just that since I had to rewatch it, I remembered the ring and how Ethan answers his own question, and it's the stupidest conclusion that I've ever heard. You're wearing a ring so guys don't talk to you, as if a ring stops guys from talking to you. As if a ring stops guys from talking to you, but also in these episodes, he says to her, well, why can't we get married? You've already got a ring. She's going to use this random ring as her wedding band. Like as much as they, as, as much as they have talked about like how sacred marriage is and how sacred the rings are and that they're a symbol of our love and a symbol of our um, um, commitment to one another. You, you want her to wear this like Cracker Jack box ring that you think that she got from like, uh, you know, a, Did, uh, a children's Was it even toy? explain where she got it from? No, well, she, no, she didn't explain. Again, he came up with that answer himself. And he, I guess he just assumed she has a travel ring. <laughs> she has a ring for traveling. Which still makes no sense. And Whitney made a great point saying, Teresa wouldn't wear a wedding ring without being married because it's bad luck. Which yeah. made me then circle back. And I'm going to be rewinding pretty far back. Teresa walked around with another woman's engagement ring and didn't seem to think that was bad luck at all. 
because she felt like it was hers. And she when it like got unstuck, she didn't tell nobody and was continuing to wear it. So it was no longer, oh, it got stuck. She felt like that ring belonged to her already. Let's be clear. She, like she felt like that ring never was never really for Gwen. Like she was like, this is my ring, honestly. And uh and also it's only bad luck if your ring ends up on somebody else's finger. Of right? Course. <laughs> of course. It's Teresa logic. I'm it's sorry. Teresa logic. <laughs> but yes, he Ethan blesses. Oh God. Ethan is very pushy this week. And I didn't yes. understand it. I didn't quite get where he was coming from, but we, we're about to talk about that. Yes. So, um, Julian steps in to explain everything, why Teresa wouldn't want to get married. He says, oh, she's a good Christian girl. She wants to get married in a church. She doesn't want her, her this, this means so much to her. She doesn't want a thrown together wedding. For, for goodness sake, her mother isn't even here. Great, all great explanations. Uh, and um, Ethan says, well, we can just have a second ceremony when we get back. I mean, again, Julian gave really good explanations that were very reasonable, and Teresa co-signed. She was like, yeah, that's it. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Great. Makes sense to me. Honestly, I was wondering how she was going to get out of it when Julian stepped in, and I was like, good job, Julian. So yeah. um, she, he says, we can just have a second ceremony when we get back to Harmony, but this one on the island will just be for us. And Teresa's still floundering, can't form a coherent sentence um and she says it just doesn't feel right the timing is off and mm -hmm. then ethan ethan starts talking about how when he was on the plane he got the strangest feeling that if they didn't get married tonight that they never will bro what <laughs> what Since when are you charity <laughs> well but also <laughs> yeah that's a good thing what why are you getting premonitions and feelings all of a sudden exactly but but also, I I would be concerned if a man said to me, "We have to get married immediately, or we never will." Like, like if, if, even if it was somebody I was in, you know, a relationship with, that, or my fiance, and they came to me, I was like, "We have to get married now, or we never will." Explain, please. What do you mean? What's so? What's going to be different tomorrow? that like what do you know that i don't know basically i mean mm -hmm. i know we know a whole lot about teresa right now but if we take that out of the the equation because ethan doesn't know that we take that out of the equation he's just pressuring her to get married for some odd reason of i don't if we don't do it now we'll never get married what are you keeping what are you holding back from me why are you so for me it's like why are you trying to get me married to you so fast all of a sudden yeah i, I would be suspicious um because again the only other thing pushy. i can think of the only other thing i can think of he wants to get hot and heavy with the girl and he wants to marry her so he can't legitimately mm, you make a good point you make a good point i mean they did already have sex though so which makes no sense because she agreed to do it without being married anyway. Why not agree to do it a second time? Other than that, like, right? The deal why is are you done. So rushing to put a ring on it, like, you know, you could fly right back to Harmony tonight. Well, Literally. like, there's no need to wait. Literally, why are y'all staying here? And how did the day get so far away from them? How did it get so dark all of a sudden? They got there that morning and found Teresa that morning. And now it's the night. It, I mean, it's the dead of night. Yes. I don't know how it I happened. I was going to talk about that when we're talking about Sheridan and Louise because that time jump had me. And we'll get to yeah. that because I have comments on that too. They blow up and the sun's up. And then all of a sudden it's the dead yes. of night in the middle of the ocean. No, but Louise's head is face down. He, he held his breath <laughs> the whole day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. The whole day. So we'll talk more about that when we get to Shuis, which is coming up right after this. Um, yeah. so uh Ethan's pressuring her, pressuring her, pressuring her. She says it doesn't feel right. Um, and then he says that um he has this feeling that if they don't get married tonight, they never will. And he badges her more and more. And he says, do this for, for me, Teresa. I just want you to do, to do this one thing for me, Teresa. It just feels very manipulative because marriage is a huge thing. Now I know that these two people are 
engaged, were supposed to be married a day ago, right? But it just, it just a day the, ago, right? Yeah, it's just a day ago. Like, okay, let's here's here's the time right now. Teresa flew down to Bermuda the morning, the morning after the wedding. Yes. And that's then right. the morning after that, Ethan flew to Teresa or flew to Bermuda. They so it's been two days basically since they were supposed to get married. Um, and now we're at the end of this day. Um, but uh yeah, he says, do this for me. Is I just want you to do this one thing. This is the only request I have of you. I've never asked you for anything. <laughs> and she eventually relents because I mean she's 18 and she loves yeah. this man and bless her little heart she relents um julian is dismayed he's like what the hell so chad that's when chad and ethan go off to prepare for the wedding get the go find the chapel and um schedule the their quickie wedding and uh julian pulls teresa out to the balcony to talk to her privately and says to her why the hell did you tell ethan you would marry him when you're already married to me bigamy is illegal in the united states but here in bermuda as well and he says if you marry ethan you will go to prison <laughs> <laughs> If you, if I got a lot of lines this week that could be um, possible episode titles, but if you marry Ethan, you will go to jail. Is definitely a a, a contender, um, or go to prison. So uh, she says she doesn't know why she 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 didn't know what to do. Like he kept pushing her, so she caved. And because um, I mean, her choices were either tell him the truth right then and there, or say yes, <laughs> right. Like yeah. he what he had already said he wasn't going to take no for an answer and he had shown that he wasn't taking no for an answer. So those were her choices. So Julian, you would not be happy either way. Actually, this is this worked out better for you because if I had told him the truth, he probably would have be would be beating your ass right now. You, they would have thrown you over the balcony. Oh like, yeah. You so but anyway, he's mad at Teresa for telling him that and um uh he says he says, you know what, I'll, I'll take care of this. I'll get the marriage annulled. You go ahead and get married to Ethan. I'll take care of everything. Once you get back to Harmony, y'all will have a second wedding and that will be your legal ceremony. And nobody ever needs to know that you and I were ever married. Um, Which and once again, great idea by Julian. It's, the, it's a good scheme to just fake it this way yeah, and then have the real it. one. Because no yeah. one's going to really know about the Bermuda one since it's just him and Teresa. Their real one will be in front of everyone. So it, yeah. I can see the brilliance of that plan. And there was a line that he did say that says, I'm Julian Crane. I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except make Ethan a crane, which is what she wants. Mm. Well, he, but that's not what he wants. And he, uh, Julian's going to, like you said, do what he wants. What he but wants. I, the thing is, uh, yes, it is an okay scheme. Like it's a it's a decent idea, if, and that's and this is a big if. If Julian really can get that marriage annulled immediately, but if he can't get the marriage annulled immediately, then she really does marry Julian. Like at this point, and later on, they do some stuff that. I think makes us believe that this wedding is not, wouldn't be legal, wouldn't be legit. Yeah. But right this moment, it seems like he's telling her, go marry Ethan. And in the meantime, I'll get our marriage annulled. But she was about to go and marry Ethan in the next like half hour, hour. Like you're gonna get the, you're gonna go to deal with Bermuda bureaucracy in the next hour and get your marriage annulled. I don't care who the fuck you are, bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't care who you are. Paperwork and bureaucracy will knock you down a peg. I, it really will. See, but his plan was he'll get his marriage annulled. The marriage to Ethan will still not be real anyway because he was going to just try to convince them to not do a real wedding, so to have a fake wedding. So they would still be married and he would still work on getting the annulment done so that when she finally does do the marriage in harmony 
and it's really doing a ceremony because technically they already signed a marriage certificate before the ceremony. It's like it's marriage one on one. You actually go and get a marriage certificate first and then perform the ceremony. Yeah, n- not in passions. Not in not Bermuda, in passions, of course. Not in Bermuda, apparently, or in passions. Like the people, the writers of passions don't understand much of anything because also later there's a whole thing about Teresa feeling woozy and it's obviously like a precursor to us finding out that she is pregnant. And it was so dumb because there's no Spoiler way. Spoiler alert, in case anyone's no, watching. <laughs> there's no way you're experiencing pregnancy symptoms in within two days of intercourse. Like, no. it, it's just, there's just no way. But anyway, these people don't know. The, the people who wrote this show seem to not know how anything works. Um, but yeah, the this wedding is... The plan is, from what I can tell, the plan is that Julian will have the his wedding to Teresa or marriage to Teresa annulled. The wedding that she and Ethan have won't be legal. And once they get back to Harmony, they will have the legal ceremony, but Ethan won't, will never be the wiser. He won't know that they weren't married legally already. But here's the thing, here's my thing. You only get legally married one time, right? Like there's one marriage certificate. Like what would they do if they, what are they going to do about the marriage certificate in Bermuda as far as Ethan and Teresa go, right? Like, are they going to sign it and not I don't send think it's it? going to be a real certificate. Cause again, he's going to try to just fake a wedding. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Ethan's yeah. a lawyer. But there but are yeah. multiple licenses floating around. Because again, there is one in Harmony waiting for a ceremony with Ethan and Teresa, which oh, yeah. didn't work. Oh, yeah. You have a good point. They would have already done their wedding license and everything. Yes. Yeah. They did that. Because they did the blood test 200 episodes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also something that people no longer do anymore. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, that's okay. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm all right. I'm feeling better about this. It's passion's logic. That's all we just got to chalk it I up. Know. Passion's sometimes logic, I, suspend some, belief. Sometimes I hit a passion's roadblock and I have a hard time getting over it, like <laughs> getting past that. But I'm going to yeah. get past it. This is the plan. It's a bad plan, but it's fine. It's what they're doing. Yeah. So uh, Julian goes on to um, uh, presumably he's leaving to take care of things, but that is not at all what he does. He goes, well, don't forget Bruce comes in, his friend Bruce. Yeah, and then he hangs out with Bruce. Instead of telling Bruce, like, fuck off, dude, I got shit to do. <laughs> I'm like, he and Bruce drink, and then Bruce talks ma- cash money shit about <laughs> Julian to his face and tells him, like, basically, I'm not really your friend. Like, I, I was having too many laughs last night to stop. Julian blames Bruce. Bruce shows up, which, reminder to those of you who may, not, may have forgotten, Bruce is like, one of the creep squad members, one of these old dudes that uh, Julian is friends with, who is an old lech, just like Julian, birds of a feather. Yeah. And um, so Bruce meets up with Julian and it was so funny. Actually, I actually did laugh at a couple of the things that <laughs> that Bruce said. Um, Julian runs into Bruce, blames him for not stopping the wedding. Um, and Bruce, uh, takes delight in this situation. He's laughing. He's joking. Like, what was I supposed to do? You know? And he says, uh, don't tell, he starts laughing. He says, don't tell me your ex-son found out you married his fiance. <laughs> I, I just laughed so hard at that. Cause he was cracking and he was like cracking up at his jokes. Like, I feel like that guy really was like having a good time with this storyline, oh, like that actor. Yeah. Um, and so he laughs about the whole situation and their joke. He jokes about Teresa keeping it all in the family. <laughs> that girl really keeps it all in the family, doesn't she? Not to um, foreshadow, but she really does. <laughs> she really does. Ugh. She really does. They talk and talk and eventually they come to the conclusion that Julian and Teresa are screwed. So like whatever happened to Julian, like Julian's plan goes out the window immediately. He goes and talks to Bruce and then, but then never goes to, to any office to try to get this marriage annulled. That would be the first, that's what he should be doing. He's yeah. that's the only thing he should be worried about doing right now. But what happens is Bruce then says, Hey, calm down. Um, or no, he doesn't tell him to calm down. He says, what about the justice of the peace? And 
um, Julian's like, what do you mean, what about the Jesse? He says, well, there's only one on the island. He's going to remember Teresa from last night. And the minute he remembers Teresa, he's going to blow this whole thing sky high. So, you know, you don't have to worry about Teresa telling him because the justice of the peace is going to tell him. And Which, again, passion's logic. How does a whole country just got one justice of the peace? Yeah. And so, OK, now this is where my ignorance as an American is going to come in because May, I'm, I, my thought process, because I thought the same thing. I was like, there's only one justice of, of the peace in all of Bermuda. But my thought process is, because he says there's only one on the island. So is Bermuda made up of multiple islands? Kind of like Japan or the Philippines or, you know, is Bermuda multiple islands or is it no, I, I one think Bermuda, island. This, it, it, I should have looked this up. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just one island and maybe there's little tiny islands around it. It's not like Hawaii that's made up of like almost equally sized um, because Japan is really just one big island with a lot of sprinkled islands around it. Right. Um, <clears throat> but maybe this is like the same thing with Bermuda and there's some little islands around, but they're all part of the country. Multiple it's just a little hard to believe that any one singular country would just have one person performing all marriages. Okay. It is seven islands. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's seven How islands. Yeah. So I, you know, I I will give them the benefit of the doubt on this. Maybe it's this. What's this the population? Of the of all of Bermuda? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe it's a smaller island. Okay. Never mind then. Because maybe the island that they're on is a small island. Right. I mean, the the whole population of Bermuda is 63,000 people. Like, that's not many people at all. You would need more than one justice of the peace. <laughs> that isn't a lot of people. That's so few people. Wow. I, okay. I will say that their casting choice of a single justice of the peace in Bermuda does not seem to go correctly. Because yeah. that's jive, Caribbean. There should be a little more color in that person. That guy looks like he came from New England. Doesn't pass the jive test at all. No. Uh, but this guy, and we're going to talk about this justice of the peace in a second. This, <laughs> this I like the performance that that uh, actor gave, though. Okay, yeah. so the Julian realizes, oh my goodness, there's only one justice of the peace on this island. I have to stop Teresa from like going down there so that she he where our scheme isn't blown sky high right mm -hmm. um so he runs out goes to find teresa and he goes back to the uh, sheridan and louise's room via the balcony but he doesn't find teresa because whitney has talked to teresa and they have this conversation so th it's very important that we talk about this conversation before we bring julian back in whitney oh whitney is the friend we all need Whitney is a good person, a good friend. She does. I she's mean, her conscience. She she's her conscience, and so they have a conversation where Whitney is trying to understand what is going on. So she's got this because Teresa's got this dress and shoes that earlier she had asked Whitney to hide. She's like, hide this for me. Um, and now we're talking. So now we're back to this dress. Now that the boys are gone, nobody's here. It's just Whitney and Teresa. Whitney's asking about this dress and mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of Teresa doing that thing where she acts like she's like a wet chihuahua where she's just like <laughs> oh where she's just God. like shaking where she's just like shaking <laughs> listen I love Lindsay is there a reason why you chose a chihuahua oh, <laughs> is it because no. she's Mexican <laughs> a, a, a wet Pomeranian then my gosh no yeah yeah I guess that I, I didn't think about that my bad <laughs> my B y'all my bad y'all know I'm not nah you're, know, you're good you're good I'm messing with you I know because like, we know she, Rebecca and them can be extremely I, I, uh. I know I should have chose a different dog <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Those little guys are always shaking. Yeah, because they don't have any, like, meat on them, and they don't have any much fur. So, like, once they get wet, they're, like, so cold and shaky. Yeah. And she looked really cold and shaky and was <laughs> doing that whole shtick that she does. Um, and Whitney's like, what is it? 
what is it about this dress? Because Teresa's like, I don't want to see this dress. And Whitney picks it up and is like, oh, yeah. is Because she says, oh, is this the dress that you want to, uh, should, should you put this dress on to get married to Ethan, basically? And she's like, no, I don't want that dress. Whitney picks it up and says, oh, well, I guess it's, it is pretty revealing. It's not necessarily something you get married in. And then Teresa says, but I did. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Just like, it is a wedding dress. And, and, Whitney's like, what do you mean this is a wedding? Poor, poor Whitney was just trying so hard. I feel like in the back of her mind, she all, I feel like she got there and knew what was going on because she knows her friend, but she just wanted to hold out. It was like, no, yeah. there's no way my, my best friend did this. But so Whitney to me is playing dumb. I know she's, I know they didn't really write it that way, but to me, I think she's playing dumb. I know her subconscious knows that Teresa got married to Julian. Like it's obvious. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I think her playing dumb is because she wouldn't be able to understand why or how. Yeah. 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 Like she know she knows Teresa's capable of crazy shit. She just wouldn't be able to put together, wait, how did we get here? Because you are so obsessed with Ethan. You would never. So Winnie gets more and more frustrated with Teresa, and Teresa finally says. I called that. I said that that is a dress that you would get married in because I got married in it last night. And Whitney says, what do you mean? Ethan wasn't here last night. Whitney, girl, what are you? Uh, girl, 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 girl. Come on now. Ethan That's wasn't here last night. That's just asking stupid questions. You came down with him. You know he wasn't there. Like, why are we asking this question? The question should be, who did you marry? Not, wait, exactly. but Ethan wasn't here. Obviously. Obviously. So we do this for way too long for Whitney to be such a smart girl. She's like, but Ethan wasn't here. So what did you do? Like, how did you get married if Ethan wasn't here? It's like, obviously she married somebody else. So they sit down, they recap, and, and Teresa explains everything, all the details, all the sordid details. And Whitney um, says... Because uh, Teresa shows her the marriage license and Whitney questions Teresa like, well, you said y'all woke up together. And that's when Teresa says, you got that right, Whitney. Not only did I marry Julian Crane, not only did I marry Julian Crane, I had sex with him. <laughs> Can you imagine like being a teenage girl? Actually, this is a short story here. Because I was about to say, can you imagine being a teenage girl and your, like, best friend tells you, like, she has, like, slept with this old dude and has married him. And has married him. When I was in high school, I had a friend who I'm not going to name. And we were really, really good friends. And she started dating this guy who was, like, in his late 20s. And we were 16. Um, and I remember that he proposed to her and they got married when we turned 18. Um, and, and, but I remember we were all of us, all of, all of, um, her bridesmaids, we were all the same age, friends were so disgusted. Like, I was just like, how is she marrying this old man? Like, of course now, like 28 isn't old, but 28 versus 16 is like crazy. You know what I mean? That's so, illegal in a lot of states. Yeah. That's nuts. <laughs> But he, to us, he was really, to, to me and all of my friends at that time, he was like so old. She brought him to prom. He came to prom. Oh. But you know what? They're still married. They have a beautiful family. So all it right all worked then. out. All right it then. all worked out. But yeah, anyway, I was just thinking about like being a teenage girl and your teenage friend tells you this, that she's gotten married to this old dude and that they've had sex. Oh, yikes. Oh, my brain could not could not even compute. So Whitney starts to just kind of lay into Teresa, rightfully so. She's doing what the mm -hmm. Russell sisters always do. The um, I told she's... you so. You know Julian. You know his reputation. What were you doing? Yeah. And she does implore Teresa to tell the truth. Exactly. She says, she tells her, you can't marry Ethan. You slept with Ethan's father. <laughs> <laughs> you can't marry Ethan. You slept with Ethan. But then she tells her, you know, he knows. Ethan knows Julian's rep. rep 
reputation, my gosh, I can't speak today. Ethan mm -hmm. knows um, Julian's reputation better than anybody else. He's not going to blame you for this. He's not going to be mad at you for this. Like he, I mean, he might, but he he will get over it. And I don't think yeah. he, he definitely will not blame you. He knows that you are blameless and that you came here out of the goodness of your heart to do a good thing for him. Yeah. Um, and Teresa refuses. She says, he'll never love me if he if he hears what I've done. He'll never love me again if he hears what I've done. And Whitney says, you already had one wedding that was called off and canceled because you didn't tell Ethan the truth. Now you have another chance. You have another wedding where you need to tell the truth. You're getting a second chance. And he will forgive you for doing for what has happened today or last night. What he won't forgive is you lying to him again, which yeah. Whitney makes such a good point here because Ethan has un very annoyingly for the last 300 episodes talked incessantly about how honest these two are with each other and how he knows she would never lie to him and how it's so important to have honesty in a relationship. I mean, this man is constantly talking about it. Yeah. So but he's also making excuses for people when they lie. So it's not a hard stop. It's not a boundary for him because Teresa's been lying since almost the day they met. For her own reasons, to get close to him, to always be around him or whatever. And they got together, okay. But there was always some deceitfulness with her. that. So he's known that this is a trait of hers. He's just always ex explaining it away. She's young. She didn't want to get in trouble. She doesn't want... So, like, dude, you're, you're allowing this person to constantly lie because you're allowing yourself to always have an excuse for why they're lying to you. So it's not a hard stop. It's not a boundary. This is why you're a guest host today, Maria. This is <laughs> good stuff, girl. Good stuff. It's not a hard boundary. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's not a hard boundary. And which is why it, do it does make sense that he she should just come clean. Yes. And that she should understand that Ethan will likely understand. You know? Yes. But again, she's a child. She's a child. I know I give she her that is, a yeah. lot. But she but so but also so is Whitney. She and Whitney are the same age. She and Whitney are the same That's age. That's also true. And Whitney is making more sense and it has a more rational mind. So uh, she she's telling her to tell Ethan the truth. And it, Teresa decides to do this. Now, here is the point where I started to yell at my computer because because I was taking notes and watching watching on yeah. my computer. Teresa decides, yes, I'm going to go and tell to Ethan the truth. But Whitney decides, I'm gonna stay here. Girl. This is a very fragile moment. You need to get Teresa to Ethan and get them and facilitate this conversation. Obviously, she's yeah. not going to do it by herself. You know this girl. Just go with her. But she doesn't go with Teresa. She's like, I need to call my mom. Eve, don't give a fuck where you are. I was, I was just as confused. Like, first of all, also, aren't you a witness to the wedding as well? Like, what What are you doing? What do you mean you got to call your mom? You just left last night. Did you not even tell her when you left? And then First, I know we're going to get to her phone call with her mom, which was crazy with Julian lurking in the back. But she's like, tell so-and-so that I'm not going to be there for, like, coaching. Because, again, now all of a sudden we, we weren't about tennis. What was that You flew about? to Bermuda and you thought you were going to make it back for a tennis lesson in the morning? What was that about? So yes, it, Whitney says, I have to call my mom. So she sends Teresa on her way, on her Mary by herself. And yeah. then she calls her mom and she says, oh yeah, um, I'm fine. Teresa's fine. Uh, make sure you tell Pilar that Teresa's fine. And please let little Susie May know that I'm not going to make it for her. T I don't think I'm going to make it for a tennis lesson. We have a tennis lesson tomorrow morning, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Why do they insist on make trying to make us think that this girl plays tennis? This girl does not play tennis. She not she no. barely ever brings it up. They just brought it. They and it was just so random to just throw that into the conversation, just to remind us. By the way, remember Whitney plays tennis. Yeah. We know and she we cares. Get it. And she's gonna be you know all red eyed and tired trying to show someone a lesson in the morning after being in Bermuda. She listen. I would. I wouldn't want tennis lessons. Tennis lessons from Whitney. She doesn't even practice. I haven't ever seen her on a court in <laughs> in, in years at this point. 
Yes, I don't want a tennis true. lesson from you. <laughs> you what 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 can you teach me? Um, so yes, she's on the phone. Meanwhile, this is the point where Julian comes looking for Teresa, right? Because he's talked to Bruce about the justice of the peace. He comes in through the balcony and um he finds Whitney who's on the phone. And once she's off the phone, Julian explains that they have to stop Teresa um because the moment the justice of the peace sees her, he'll recognize her and tell Ethan to stop the whole wedding and everything. Whitney then like agrees with Julian, like, yes, we have to stop Teresa. No, you don't have to stop Teresa. Teresa's going to tell Ethan the truth. That's where Teresa's mm -hmm. going. So she's going to find Ethan. And here's the thing. Once she finds Ethan, even if she finds Ethan and he's with the justice of the peace, she can just look at Ethan and say, hey, I need to talk to you. Come with me. Can we talk alone? Although I do, knowing Ethan, he'll probably be like, oh, everything's fine. Oh, this is the justice of the peace. Oh, oh. you know, oh, yeah. how he does and not let her speak. Um, mm -hmm. But they run off to go and find Teresa. Um, I think I, I wrote, what difference does it make? That's what it, <laughs> I was like, what difference does yeah. it make if they find Teresa before she, uh, the justice of the peace sees her or not? Because the whole point is that she's supposed to be telling Ethan the truth as far as it goes, yeah. as far as Whitney goes, you know, with Julian. I understand. Also, one point. Where'd that dress come from? I thought she didn't have money. Which dress? They, she changed? The one that Teresa changed into the purple one. You, 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 that's crazy. I didn't even notice she changed clothes. Well, of course she, she wasn't going to go to the robe in, to the chapel. She changed and did her hair. You... She got ready for her wedding. You make such a great point. Where the hell did that dress come from? Where did that dress come from? Because and she, she if, and if she brought that dress, why didn't she wear that dress to, to dinner? dinner? Yeah. The Where only is... thing I can think of, Whitney loaned her that dress. But then why would, why would Whitney, Whitney have brought bring a dress? dress? Yeah. No, I think. Yeah, you, that's a plot hole. That's a hole. That's a that's, that's a, a gaping hole. hole. Uh, cause they, they never go to buy a new dress. It literally goes from talking about the, the other dress, the other wedding dress yeah, to her being in that purple dress. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And it's not the dress she wore to Bermuda. So it's not like nope. she just changed into her original clothes. She wore like khakis and a, and a cute little, like what she wore. She did wear Whitney's clothes to Bermuda. Bermuda. I, I, those were clothes That's that Whitney right. had loaned her. Yeah. Huh. So she didn't bring clothes. That's right. She left she with what anything. she had, which was Whitney's clothes. So where did that purple dress come from? Passions. Passions, <laughs> passions came, logic. There you go. Came from passions. Yeah, that's a good... I, I, you caught a good one. I didn't even catch that one. So they... Go, um, Whitney finds Teresa, but Julian... Somehow they get separated. I don't know how, but Julian gets to the chapel and finds... Ethan and Chad talking, <clears throat> um, not to the Justice of the Peace, but just Ethan and Chad in there where the Justice of Peace is. But we need to talk about what happened before Julian got in there. That's what we need mm -hmm. to talk about. So, Ethan and Chad are talking. Ethan is talking about how happy he is. He says, look at this place. It looks like Teresa de decorated this already for her own wedding. Because we find out from the Justice of the Peace that they had these specific flowers already there from the last wedding because they were the bride's favorite flowers. Which, how did they get so many of those flowers? Like, like I, I, don't, I don't know, whatever. They had and her favorite was, flowers there already. They were both so drunk. How were they directing anyone about flowers? Exactly. And, and, and I know that like that whole thing is cringy watching the flashbacks, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I was laughing because when they're like, Do you wanna get married? Julia's like, What's up? <laughs> the <laughs> flashbacks to them getting married are funny. They are. They're funny. Like it it's it's shitty what's happening. The thing is, my my the thing that was, has always been very hard for me to watch or the thing that I was struggling with last week and the week before was all the stuff that was happening in bed. The stuff that yeah. I was watching where he where she was clearly like incapacitated and he's like pawing at her body and forcing her to lay down and forcing her to stay on the bed. All of that was really kind of like sinister but wasn't being played up in the way that I felt like it should have been. The wedding stuff, even though it is like really... Ugh, 
of, of what are we doing? It's, it is funny. It is, it, I laughed. I laughed. Cause it was yeah. just so, they were so sloppy and such a mess. Over the top acting. It was amazing. You know, and I think at that time too, what's up was a thing. Yes, they were doing, that's when I laughed. That's what I laughed at. Cause I was like, that's so hilarious. They were just going, what's up, what's up. But I oh didn't make a note. They didn't say yes. What's up is not yes. <laughs> so is that <laughs> legal? There's no That's, yes. You make a good point. Well, you know what? We're gonna get I'm about to I'm about to lay into this justice of the peace, just so you know. Oh, go, go. So let's talk about this justice of the peace. He shows up to the chapel where Ethan and Chad are talking about getting married and not to each other, obviously. But um the justice of the peace finds like the pictures, the wedding pictures from the uh, Julian and Teresa's wedding right mm -hmm. before he sees Ethan and Chad and he looks at him. He's like, oh, these are a disgrace. And it's just pictures of them being real sloppy with champagne and falling all over each other. And um, so Ethan and Chad come in and uh, they're ready to book the wedding. And the justice of the peace says, yeah, we got open availability. What time do you want to get married? And Ethan's like, as soon as possible. Um, and he says, well, we offer a full service wedding, um, photographer, videographer, all the things it rings, anything you might need. And Ethan says, oh, are those pictures from a recent wedding that he was holding? He says, are those pictures from a recent wedding? I'd love to see them and see what kind of work your photographer does. And the Justice of the Peace looks at him and is like, this is not a fair representation. <laughs> a fair representation of what our photographer does. And so he refuses to show him the pictures. We get a lot of these moments this week with Ethan. It looks like Ethan's about to find out that Julian and Teresa got married, but none of them bear fruit. I can't talk. None of them <laughs> bear fruit. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk too much about them, but that was one of them, one of the moments, which actually was kind of funny to me. Because um, at one point he drops the pictures and it's whatever. N nothing happens it's with these. It's all stall tactics. I mean, think about it. We're reviewing a whole week. And you can condense it to like 30 minutes. Yeah, nothing happens. Line. Nothing happens with those pictures at all. So um, then the justice starts to talk about, well, these pictures are from a wedding that I did last night and it was really crazy. The, they woke me up out of my sleep in the dead of the night. They were so drunk and I, there, it was a considerably older man and I, I hate to call him an old lech, but that's what he was, that, that, his words, not mine. And he says, and the, the young lady was uh, less than respectable. And then he talks about how drunk they were and that the groom was chugging from a bottle of champagne during the whole ceremony, which begs the question, why would you marry these two people? Thank you. I agree. Wh what? You seem to have such a moral high high almighty attitude about like the sanctity of marriage but then why did you marry him and don't give me this well it's julian crane and he could do what he wants yeah because it seemed like he didn't even know who julian was like until julian told him who he was in this day so yeah. I, why would you why would you agree to marry these two people i would think that there would be like an ethical concern probably i don't know like Oh, and why are you know. complaining about being woken up in the dead of night if they're literally saying it's a 24-hour chapel? Then yeah. should you not have two people working? Like, Hello? Are you are you just on call? If you're on call, then don't complain that they woke you up. You on call, dude. Yeah. This is your job. It's 24 hours. You offer yeah. this service. Yep. You're on call. You offer the, you're the one that says it's 24 hours. So yeah, they're going to wake, people are going to wake you up from time to time. And yeah. yeah. And what do you also like the whole, like they were so drunk and not respectable. Why do you run a 24 hour wedding chapel? What do you, what kinds of couples do you expect to come in here at 3 AM? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I, and then I didn't you don't even offer Elvis. Come on. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> Elvis, what, uh, who's the other, Pat, at least Pat Boone. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a bad joke. Don't laugh. <laughs> but anyway, they, whatever. He goes on and on about 
these two people and Ethan's like, well, not me and my fiance. We take marriage very seriously and she's a very respectable young girl and we really believe in the sanctity of marriage. It doesn't matter. Like, you don't know this guy. You don't have anything to prove <laughs> to this man. It is the sanctity of marriage if you're forcing the girl to marry you after she said, no, let's wait. No, mm. we have to get married. Then how much do you really respect marriage? Mm -hmm. Very true, Maria. Um, so, <laughs> oh, meanwhile, this all happens. The the justice of the peace then leaves to like deal with some wedding stuff, I guess. And that's when Julian comes into the chapel looking for Teresa, uh, but he only finds Ethan and Chad. Um, and they talk for a little bit. Ethan says to uh, Julian at one point, I'm really glad you're here. I've, oh, oh my God. He says, I know I'm not necessarily your son anymore, but I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you're, I'm actually glad you're here. Oh, cause I mean, that's his dad, man. That man it has is. only not been his dad for like six months. You know, that's his yeah. father. That's the man who raised him. Uh, it's true. Oh. He might not have always liked him, but he respected him as his dad. And he obviously was treated better than even any of the other kids. Cause not like Julian talks about any of the other kids. So even but, though, you know, Ivy kept, you know, Ethan close, it meant he was able to build a relationship with Ethan. He always did care about Ethan. He is just shitty. Sorry. Uh, no, what? why are you I apologizing? No, they, they, he is shitty. I'm cursing. <laughs> have you heard me? <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that we don't, you know, have issues with YouTube or anything. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. I don't care about any of that. <laughs> say what you want to say. This is a free speech zone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, he, no, he, he has been shitty, but it's still his dad. And like, here's my thing. Like, I can't speak for you, Maria, but for me, if today I found out that my father wasn't uh, biologically my father, it would change exactly nothing about the way I feel about him because all of that's done. All It's built. The relationship is built. Um, yep. And I mean, me and my daddy look like twins. So there's literally yeah. no way that he's not my dad. But like, Same. I look exactly like my dad. Why exactly. is that? I, I read one time, and I don't know how true this is. I read one time that, like, a lot of, like, evolutionarily, people tend to look like their fathers because um, it kept, like, men from killing the children. It, it's actually, I've read the same thing. It, you yeah. know, as infants and babies, the babies will tend to look like the father just to have, like, confirmation that it's theirs and they can bond with the baby to take care of the baby. Yeah, like... I don't know. I read that one time and was and was mortified. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Ethan, Ethan shares like a slight tender moment with Julian, not knowing that Julian is a, just like the shittiest fucking person. Um, oh, well, yeah. he does know that, though. But, you know, he Ethan's a sweet dum dum. So um, Julian then uh, I, he leaves. I don't even want to talk about some. There's something happens, but it's not even it's not important. So I'm going to skip over it. Julian does leave because he's looking for Teresa, who's like, I'm going to go find Teresa. Um, but before he Wait, finds there Teresa... there was a moment I did want to talk before you get to that, because when he is with Julian, Ethan then brings up the story that he got from the Justice of the Peace about, like, oh, there was a couple here that got married or whatever, and that Ethan's, like, in passion soap opera, I know what's going on here. And, you know, and, and to then find out Ethan's like, it was one of your friends that got married to some young girl. And he, all of a sudden, it's all like, he's all high and mighty about marriage to the most judgmental fuck I've seen. I'm like, calm the fuck down, Jul uh, Ethan. Yeah. You and your high almighty. And that's one of the biggest issues I've had with Ethan throughout the whole thing. Because his moral high ground when it's like, dude, you're the problem. I don't believe Ethan's ever even been to church. <laughs> right to a service do you no i don't no i don't when, and later on we'll talk about it later but later on when pilar sees ivy at church she's like what the fuck are you doing here <laughs> yes <laughs> she's yeah. like and don't tell me you're here for the service because no you're not <laughs> no i don't think i don't think ethan's ever even been to his church service so for him to yeah, always talking about like the sanctity of marriage and the you know being all uh, holier than thou about things feels a little off to me yeah 
But but that's always been Ethan's MO. He has always been better than everyone else and expects mm-hmm. the most of everyone. You are absolutely right. That is, <laughs> that is so true. So, um, Julian, did that, yes, they do have that conversation. And that is when uh, Julian goes to find Teresa. Meanwhile, Whitney has found Teresa. Teresa's sitting right, right outside the chapel. Yeah. Right outside the chapel. Whitney has found Teresa. Teresa tells her, um, I feel weak like I I feel woozy I was about to go and talk to Ethan but I started to feel really sick so that's why I'm sitting right here and I knew immediately that this was supposed to be like a foreshadowing for the fact that she is pregnant but there's just no way she spoiler. this spoiler <laughs> alert if you haven't if you don't know after 20 something years <laughs> Teresa's pregnant yeah um, she um but there's just no way that you would be experiencing pregnancy symptoms that quickly. No, that Not quickly. At all. Literally, but if she if she had passion's sex, logic, if she had sex with Julian, it would have been one night, and if it was from Ethan, which it was, passion. Uh, spoiler alert. Then it yeah. was two nights ago. Yep. It's just there's not even time for the implantation. Nothing has implanted yet. But not those the little eggs and sperm are still trying to find each other. Yeah, that, but passions doesn't know. <laughs> These people just don't know. Uh, so, and Lord knows the effects you're having on a child after all of the drinking that just happened as well. But like I said, she's not even really pregnant yet. Like she can't possibly yeah. be really pregnant yet. Is it? But <laughs> she did do a lot of drinking. She, yeah. So, oh, ooh. I mean, it's her first time. She's tiny. One glass was gonna get her done. <laughs> yeah. and but she practically bottles. finished a bottle they drank bottles so I know she was sick oh my gosh oh. yeah so, so um, Whitney Whitney's talking to Teresa and she, Whitney explains that the, there's only one justice of the peace and the justice of the peace is going to recognize her so she needs to tell Ethan first it is at this point that Whitney should have gone into the chapel, gotten Ethan, and taken him to Teresa, where the two of them can have a conversation. I, it's not Whitney's fault, the same way, the same way Kay pouring the water on the pyre isn't Simone's fault, but at the same time, you are supposed to be the voice of reason, and you are frankly often a, very judgmental of like Teresa's choices and you want her to do what you want her to do if you want Teresa to do what you want Teresa to do you have to facilitate it you have to facilitate it let's say I mean yeah. I just and instead of doing that what happens is Julian then comes out of the chapel and finds them and then we get this battle of good and evil, right? So we have Whitney telling Teresa on on as the angel on her shoulder saying, you need to tell Ethan. And the devil on her shoulder, Julian saying, no, definitely don't tell Ethan. Nobody needs to know, go in there and get married. I'm gonna take care of everything. The the justice of the peace. Oh, I've basically he had already threatened this. Oh no, he hadn't yeah. threatened him yet. He hadn't threatened him no, yet. Not yet. <laughs> he hadn't threatened him yet. But he was like, I'm gonna take care of, take care of everything. You need to go in there and marry Ethan. Back and forth. Nobody's ever gonna know. You, you, and, uh, Whitney saying you're a bigamist. Him saying no, you're not. This isn't real. Yada yada yada. Eventually, but it's weird how Whitney keeps flip flopping because at first it's like tell Ethan, then don't tell Ethan. Now it's tell Ethan again. No, what I is think, it, Whitney? I think Whitney was always tell Ethan. What happened was, Julie, what happened was she didn't want the justice of the peace to tell Ethan. She wanted mm. to make sure that Teresa was the one who told Ethan. So yeah. on that, on that part, she and Julian were aligned because neither of them wanted the justice of the peace to see Teresa before Ethan did. However, yeah. they diverge because Whitney just wants him to find out the truth from Teresa. Whereas Julian says, nobody ever needs to know there is there is no truth. <laughs> like, I am the truth. And yeah, I am um, Julian Crane and I do what I want. And I do what I want, apparently, which is true. I've, that, I haven't seen anything to the contrary yet. He's, he is constantly doing what he wants. Except, well, he didn't you know, want to marry Teresa. He just kind of wanted to bed her. 
He didn't want to marry Sheridan either. I mean, oh, Lord, why did I say that? No, I would hope he doesn't want to marry Sheridan. <laughs> he didn't want to kill Sheridan. He didn't want to Not kill Sheridan Not that the Sheridan show either. isn't above incest. No, it's it's <laughs> built on incest. It's like one of the first storylines we, we start to get a little inkling about that they oh, yeah. go on and on with forever. But yes, um, I did not mean Sheridan and Julian married. I meant that Julian did not want to kill Sheridan, but he just decided that he had to. He has to because dad and he wants the money and yeah. his father's approval. And, yeah, because he's a bad man. He's a bad, bad man. A, an abused man, but a bad man, nonetheless. Um, so they're going back and forth. Don't tell them the truth. Don't tell them the truth. Don't tell them the truth. Tell him. You have to tell him. You have to tell Ethan. Ethan pops out of the chapel and says, tell me what? <laughs> what do you have to tell me? And that's when Julian says to him, well, she wants to postpone the wedding. Teresa wants to postpone the wedding. That's what she wants to tell you. Ethan says, is that true? And she says, no. Girl. And at this point, he grabs her by the arm and drags her into the chapel. He's like, we're going to get married right now. Let's do this. So then she tells him, once they get up there um, inside, she says she's changed her mind. We can't get married right now. Not here. Ethan says he doesn't understand. And he gives her an opening. This was a great moment for Teresa. Could have been. He gives her an opening. He says, what are you not telling me? Why don't you want to get married? What are you not telling me and that's when you say i married julian by mistake he got me real drunk and yeah. maybe we had sex i'm not entirely sure he thinks we did but i don't remember it if he remembers it that and i don't remember it that's him assaulting me do what you gotta do about that i and mean she had to adding a lot to what no one knows yet but she knows plenty that she can tell ethan right now yeah she does not do that at all um, because remember, one of the reasons why she doesn't want Ethan to know, not just because she doesn't want him to know the mistakes she made, she's also worried about Ethan killing Julian and Ethan's going to then be in jail and she doesn't want Ethan to go to jail for killing Julian. Yeah. She's that's always whole... like five steps ahead of like La La Land. It's like. <laughs> that's her whole thing with Ethan and Luis because a couple like last week and the week before she wanted to get out of there but she, Julian told her well he, he's gonna kill me and if he kills me he's gonna spend the rest of his life in jail is that what you want and they, so the, Julian put that seed in her head unfortunately and yes she yeah. is sticking with it um, so yes that's definitely a part of why she doesn't want to say anything but girl look why are you I don't know I, mm, mm, I, I'm sorry. I just, at a certain point, Teresa, something's got to give, right? Yeah. Like we can't keep doing this. But um, so she, he, he says, "What are you not telling me?" Um, she finally says, "You know, I really want to talk to you alone because this just doesn't feel right. I don't feel right." And he then tells, and I mean, listen to those words and look at this girl. Again, she's shaking. She looks he very- He doesn't know her like Whitney does. He's literally known her for less than a year. You don't need to know somebody to see them convulsing and be like, there's something wrong here. <laughs> right? <laughs> like- I'm Not you, very astute. <laughs> you no, know, that he is not. There, Cause she's shaking, tears in her eyes, Look, looks, terrified horrified and, and he's just he, like but but in Ethan's eye it's like she's just passionate yeah, <laughs> no, he says he says oh these are just wedding jitters yeah. wedding jitters this girl about to pass out <laughs> wedding jitters well, like wedding jitters would be Teresa because she's been dying to marry you since she's been three which is why it should be so weird and concerning to you because she has again since they've been together um legitimately she has been talking about them getting married like every other day she's been pushing this man to get married so the fact that now all of a sudden she's like no that should lead you to okay pause stop pump the brakes something's going yeah. on not Ethan though. He says, nope. these are just wedding jitters. Do the and he says again, he says, I want you to do one thing for me. Just one thing. Put all your jitters and your doubts and your fears away and just marry me today. Oh gosh. So um he says, I just want to make this thing official. And that's when the justice of the peace enters and says, 
Harumph. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh my god, you two from last night. <laughs> No, the mass performance was great. The performance was Wait, great. But, but did they wake him up again in the middle of the night? Is that what it is? That man has no sleep? Yeah, this <laughs> man, th listen, I'm going to tell y'all right now, this actor was going to make sure we remembered him. Uh, he was like, y'all are going to remember me. I'm going to make the most of my little stint on Passions. And he did. He worked oh, it. Oh, we should have looked up that actor and see where he if, is now. If Eric was here, I'm sure he would know exactly who that is. Oh, my <laughs> God, yeah. That, Eric always knows exactly who every actor is, you know, and he'll give you a biography and give you the, the, the background and what they played in and what their favorite cereal is. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this guy comes in and he he says, "The two of you, you two, or something like that," and uh, uh, he says he knows them from last night. This is where this is where things get real stupid really really dumb at this point julian j stops uh like steps in and says oh yes he saw us last night in the dining room having dinner at the restaurant having dinner that's where he saw us and then ethan says but you said you didn't see teresa yesterday mm, got caught in a lie and uh julian says i did no 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 i did see teresa just i didn't see her at first i hadn't seen her in first. it doesn't it doesn't pass the smell test no. doesn't pass the smell test no, because, because also julian ethan knows that teresa's only reason was to be there to talk to julian so what was Teresa doing this whole time? And when they got there and they found Julian, but they didn't find Teresa, Julian uh, said he had no clue that Teresa was even on the island. So it, again, it doesn't pass the smell test, but, it, but Ethan accepts this. Ethan accepts yeah. this, even though it's obviously a lie. Um, yeah. He says, no, we, we, we had dinner together and whatever. Then he pulls the justice to the side and he threatens him and he gives him the full crane treatment. I'm a crane. You will do what I say because I'm Julian Crane, damn it. Yeah. I do what I want. I get what I want. He says, so you're going to marry these two. You're not going to say anything about the marriage between me and her last night. And uh, mm -hmm. you're going to you're gonna do it and you're not going to make any bones about it. You get me? Yeah. You dig? And, and it's, it's going to be a fake wedding. You're not really going to really marry them. Hence. And the and the justice says, I dig, I dig, I dig. So um, he... now this would have been a great opportunity, even though the justice is supposed to be all high and mighty. to you know, maybe get some bribe money here. He Seriously. is a crane. Yeah, I you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. He should have so been sleep like through the night. He should have um, been like, yeah. Uh, so what are you going to? What are you going to give me? What do we got here? I'll do it for a, a cool grand. I would, I would, I would ask for more. I'd be, I would probably ask for ten k. Julian yeah. Crane, you got, you can get whatever you want, right? You always start high and you work your way down. You I mean, start high. It's like, how much? What does this mean to you? And I can yeah. get rid of evidence. Like we could work together, but you know, this is supposed to be so, you know, a clergyman. Mind I, you, Justice of the Peace, which is non-denomination, so we don't know what his religious affiliation is. Yeah, I don't know if, if he is a religious man or not, but he definitely is a judgmental man. Um, but Very. He, but he um, he doesn't he gets scared and he f says, "Sure, okay, I got it. I'm gonna I I get it. I get what we're doing here. I got the I understand the assignment. I will be turning it in on time." So. Yeah. Ethan tells, um, that's when Ethan tells Julian he's glad he's there. I'm sorry, I said that earlier, but this is the moment when Ethan says to Julian, I'm glad you're here, Dad. Aw. Uh, meanwhile, Whitney's still trying to convince Teresa that she needs to tell Ethan the truth, but we get the same back and forth. He'll never forgive me. Um, and Julian, and, and then she asked the caveat that Julian said he's going to fix everything, so I'm not going to be a bigamist, which we talk about bigamy and use the word bigamy and bigamist so many times in these episodes which made yes. me laugh because once we get to the the grace and sam stuff she says it a few times yeah and, and it was funny enough that it came up in this storyline but then it came up again i was like oh it's just bigamy's the word of the week bigamy it the is. word of the week yeah yeah no creativity 
you know, begging me for passions this couple of weeks. Yeah, let's stick to this. Yeah, let's stick to this. So, um, they begin this ceremony, but Teresa stops it. They're about to do the thing, right? They're holding hands, and Teresa says, wait, stop. Stop the wedding. Stop everything. And she's like, I need to tell you something. And then we hear a commotion outside of the chapel, and it sounds yes, like... Which is a moment to pause, because then we should jump to... That's exactly Chevrolet where Louise. we're going. We're going exactly. That's exactly where we're going. We hear a come. It, 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 honestly, I give passions a kudos this week on this because this flowed really well. Like yeah. my notes flow. Uh, all, typically, when there's a lot of different storylines in one place, it gets really disjunct and they kind of, you know, they're flowing in and out of each other's storylines. But this week, it was really nice. We get a very clean segue into Shuis. So, um, yes, we get a commotion outside. The wedding stops, or it had already stopped, but at this point, this is when our focus shifts to what's going on out there. Everybody goes outside, and we find um, out that uh, a ship has exploded, a boat has exploded, they're bringing in some survive uh, a survivor, right? So now we need to talk about the stuff that happens to Luis before we get to this point, right? Yeah. Oh, Luis, 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 I feel bad for the guy, but I laughed my ass off. <laughs> it was so funny, but I'm not gonna lie, it's one of the shortest notes that I took because mm -hmm. it was so repetitive that it was, yep. it was like, see previous point, see previous point. <laughs> Yep, I, it was like the shortest thing I did this week. And the, honestly, yeah. the only reason there's more note, like a page of notes here, even that much notes, is because there's some Ethan and Teresa and Chad stuff, Whitney stuff, like um, added in for beef. Because Sheridan and Luis's boat explodes. That's what we get at the top of this episode. It explodes. The sun is up in the sky. Up. The, sun, the sun is up. This boat explodes. Luis survives. And we see him floating face down in the water. At um, night. At night. The dead So of he's night. been holding his breath for a good couple hours. I get, I get. We just time skipped. We did the time warp. Let's do the time warp again. We did a time, we did a passion's time warp. Um, and, and what's interesting is that they, in the beginning, because it's supposed to be a fresh new week, so they do like a slight recap. So they actually started that storyline with Sheridan screaming for Louise while a bomb literally saying detonate. Girl, why ain't you running? I, that? Why are you just standing there calling? I mean, do you want to kill him? Because you're calling him to a bomb. Exactly. That that irritated me so much because it has seven seconds on it when we saw it. By the time we see it, it has seven seconds on it. I feel like when she saw it immediately, like the first time she saw it, it probably had a solid 10 seconds. That's enough time to run away from the bomb, at least. You want to get away from the epicenter of the bomb, at the very yeah. least. You want to try to get away. But yeah, she stands there and screams at that bomb and is yelling for Luis, who, like you said, is running towards the bomb. Like, what are you what are you doing, Sheridan? You're luring him to his death. And instead of and Sheridan is so much smarter than this. She's so much better than this. I hate that they didn't even have her try to save herself. They didn't even have her try to save herself. What? So Why? She could have done it. First and foremost, she could have ran. If she was trying to be brave, she could have seen if it was actually lodged, that she can't pull it to throw it overboard. And that's, I know, asking a lot, because in the moment, you sort of like deer in headlights. But at the least you could do is try to run. And if you the see Louise getting on the boat, dude, run toward him, grab him, and throw yourselves both off. Like, come on. Yeah. The least you can do is, is run. That's exact. I... There's not to for me, there's really nothing. If I'm being honest about like if I was in a situation, that's the only thing I could think of to do. I certainly am not touching it. Uh, I'm going to try to get away from it as fast as I can. My knees now, my knees might not carry me that far, but I'm gonna try, you know. Not Sheridan, though. Not Sheridan, no. She's gonna just scream Luis at the bomb, idiot. I'm sorry, that really irritated me, but yes. yes. Um, the boat explodes. Luis survives, and at this point, he he starts to come to in the in this water, 
in the open ocean, pitch black because it's the ocean. And um, he starts yelling out for Sheridan, Sheridan, Sheridan. And it's at this point that we he get a light gets shined on him and it's a boat of, I guess, fishermen. I don't know who what they were, but they sh they fish him out of the water, right? And he's rescued and he says, our boat exploded. My girlfriend, my fiance was on the boat. Uh, radio for help. We, you need help. They say, we can't radio. Our radio's down. Whoopsie daisy. Whoopsie, our wait, our radio, our radio's down, so we our can't do down. anything. One thing I noticed, they call out to someone named Frank. Who's Frank? There was only two people on that boat. Okay, I'm so glad you brought this up because, yes, there were only two people that we saw. But then, yeah, there is another person who is just like off screen, I guess. Because I was confused by that too. They were like somebody there was somebody driving the boat but i was like i thought this guy was the captain i thought he was the one driving the boat but and yeah. what accent is that that's not a bermuda accent that was either english or australian i couldn't quite i kept going back and forth like is that english is that australian because that's not from caribbean don't know what any of these people were they certainly were not locals <laughs> they certainly were not locals ridiculous no. No. um yeah they yeah they were I, Australian or something. One of them was, and then one was American, and then one was like I don't know. Yeah, like halfway know. through English, half English, British English, half American English. It was, I don't know. They were going in and out of accents. It was weird. Um, yeah. But yeah, they and, fish and really quickly of... too for the people who set the bomb. You have a heat meter. What is that? A what? A heat meter. He's like, look, it's getting bigger. When the bomb exploded. Listen, let me be clear with you, Maria. I did those scenes where Boris, those assassins, Boris and whatever her name is. Oh, ba I Basil, the name. Basil and Joan, that's their names. Those scenes I ignored entirely. I was like, oh. what are they even still doing here? What are they well, even still doing? He's trying to get paid. They already got paid. They actually already got paid. And I guess Passions has rewritten that because they go to Julian's room after they plant the bomb, the first they planted the rock bomb two times too. That's another thing. Pastor just rewrote this shit because they go and get paid. They go to Julian's room. He's like, "What the hell are you doing here?" And he gives them a giant envelope of cash. If it were me, I would have fucked off by now. I'm an assassin, yeah. and also, also, I'm an assassin. I know where to find Julian Crane if I need to find him. But I'm not going down for these two murders. Okay, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. stick around. I know where to find him. And like, and any assassin worth his salt should have definitely gotten paid up front. You, that's not something you wait till services are rendered to get paid for. Sometimes you do half and half. You get half, and then half when now. you bring me proof, you get the other half. You know what? Maybe that's what he paid. Maybe that's what Julian paid them was half, and then they were waiting on their other half. But still, it's Julian Crane, and you have evidence that shows that he hired you. So he's going to he he can. You're going to be able to find him. You're going to be able to get your money. You should not still be on this island. I'm sorry. Yeah. If if it's me, I'm as an assassin. I'm in and I'm out. Right? I'm mm -hmm. not sticking around. They stuck around hanging out for what? What are y'all doing? So um, one girl's yeah. having remorse, the other one's all excited, and they have a heato meter. Literally, uh, that's what he called it. Look, it's a heato meter. A heat. You can look out the window and see the explosion. Why do you need a a heato meter for? And what does it? What ex I know it says heat o meter, but what does it measure? Heat? Is that a thermometer? <laughs> then you would also see that Luis is still alive because he generates <laughs> heat. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't. You caught that, and I didn't even catch it because I was not paying attention to those two idiots. This is like, my first time. I was I was detailed. No, I love it. Here's here's the thing. Every once in a while, I'd like do the show by myself, and I don't like doing the show by myself partially because I know I miss details, and the that's the great thing about having somebody else to talk to is because if I miss something, the other person often has picked up on that thing. And if it's important, one or both of us have figured, have thought about it or wrote it down or something, so it's not gonna get missed. So yeah. thank you. Cause heat Heatometer is hilarious. I know. It's so funny. <laughs> Heatometer is hilarious. Where'd you get it? The Acme Corporation? Where'd you oh get my it? God. 
Well, the bomb does look like something you would buy at Acme. He got his bomb, his heatometer. What else? Anvils? What'd you get from it? The- a bomb that has phases? That's a first. Why is there a phase? I don't. And, and what were these? Fa- what did they even mean? Final phase? What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, gosh. What a what a show what a show but yes, i love it i love it let's talk about we we gotta get into these we, just, I, we were just talking about how we don't have any Luis notes Shuis notes we have been talking about it for so long already so they fish Luis out of the water but Luis is like right he says radio you need to find um get a search party out here to find my fiance she's out there they say their radio is down we can't radio and there's a storm coming in we got to get back to shore and we'll deal with it there and we'll send somebody out and he's like no we have to find her and he jumps off the boat and back into the water and listen he did it this he did it first when he did it i was like you know what i expected that of luis that's dedication i would expect no less from luis lopez fitzgerald of course he jumped back into the water of course and if he sees that no one else is willing to help him find her and he just got out of the water yeah okay i'm gonna do it yeah i ain't gonna do it i'm gonna do it i get it they find him again and they fish him (laughs) out of the water again and then he jumps back into the water again and I, i'm not gonna lie y'all i was cracking up because what so what happens is they fish him out he's like we got we got to help sheridan like I, I i gotta get off this boat i have to help sheridan i have to i have to i have to um they try to restrain him a bunch and they sit him down and they kind of walk away from him. And then once they get his eye, their eyes off of him, he gets up and he jumps off the boat again. <laughs> and, like, Luis. And, and it's funny because they're talking so like informally to him at this point, like as if they're old, old friends. He's like, they're like, Luis, man, Sheridan's gone. Sheridan's gone. Like they know Sheridan. I don't know. It's you like, you got to face facts. You this and he's like, nope, jumping it again. Dude, mm-hmm. like, if a fish is able to get up and jump out after a point, you're like, you know what, fish, you gotta go. <laughs> like, and you he, earned it. Go back. Yeah, he jumped back into the water two times. Two times he jumps back into the water. The second time when they fish him out of the water, I mean, into the open ocean. Yeah, like, I don't think anybody. I hope. I hope everybody is understanding how insane that is. How crazy that is. If a man ever did that for me, I, I'd never leave him, no matter what he did. I don't think. <laughs> you jump back he into the open ocean. When he jumped in, because he would end up just grabbing something and hanging because he's so tired. He wasn't yeah. swimming under looking for her. Nothing. He just would jump over and then hang on to something. Yeah, and he they wasn't in his out. right mind. He wasn't no. in his right mind. It's obvious. So they get him back on the boat, and the third time they fish him out, they they punch him and knock yeah. him out. <laughs> exactly like for your own good, brother. For your own good, and that's exactly what Simone should have been done to Kay. That's what she should have done to Kay. Oh, wait till knock we get her to that out. storyline. Knock her mm. out for her own mm. good and for ours as well. Um. So yes. He gets knocked out by these uh, fishermen. Because he's trying to go back into the water. Yep. And they finally were like, no, not again. Not again. Yeah, we're not like, doing we're... this again. I'm tired. We're they're no. like, we've already and fished you out three out. times and there's a hurricane coming. We have to yes. get to shore. And they say, you're you're chasing a ghost. Like, Sheridan is gone. You you have to face facts. You know, there's no way. Like, if she did, if if she even su- survived the the explosion... She's not going to survive this storm. Like, it's over, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so they knock him out and get him back to shore. Um, and I want to and- say, because I wrote this in my notes, is like the Australian actors doing a poor job of rocking on the waves because they're oh. like this. <laughs> Yeah, they were, it was, well, they, I think they were supposed, we were supposed to believe that it's very, like, really rocky and yeah. stormy. Yeah. But he I was really stop laughing. I was like, you guys are, like, really working it. <laughs> they were really going for it. They were really going for it. Yeah. The, the okay. high seas, sailing the high seas. So, yeah, they get him into shore and they don't take him to a hospital. And I know I've yeah. said this. I know I have said this 
on this show so many times, they never take people to the hospital. What is their thing against hospitals? That's the first thing. Tara, this man was Eve isn't there. Eve's not there. What can we do? <laughs> no, that would have been so funny though if Eve just showed up out of nowhere and was like, oh, I just came because I was worried about Whitney. Let me take care of Louise. I need privileges. But that would have happened. If she had been like randomly, they put the character. That's exactly. She would have taken over. I'm a doctor. I'm I got a, this. I'm a doctor, people. So um, they bring him ashore uh, on a stretcher. And this is where we collide with the Ethan and yeah. Teresa story, where they're coming out of the, the chapel. They're hearing about some chaos on a boat. A boat exploded, yada, yada, yada. Um, the girl, Teresa. Teresa's concerned that it might be Luis and Sheridan, but Ethan tries to calm her down, but it is Luis and Sheridan. And we do see Luis's body being brought in on a like a makeshift gurney and they lay him on a picnic table. Take him to the hospital. Take him Maybe to the hospital. Maybe it was just one and he was sleeping. Uh, well, we need a reason to stop Ethan and Teresa from marrying. So of course, let's collide that storyline with, you know, Luis, but we needed time for the drama with Ethan and Teresa, which is why we have Luis jumping in and out like a fish <laughs> on the water like he's Aquaman. <laughs> I'm sorry, that tickled me. <laughs> jumping in and out of the water like he's Aquaman. <laughs> when when he, when he kept jumping into the... I was dying laughing like I it was sad like I knew I was supposed to be sad but it was just so funny <laughs> because also the fishermen are like I be oh oh my god we gotta get him again so aqua yes they bring Aquaman ashore <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that now obviously breath for three or four hours as the sun comes down you gotta be Aquaman creatures of the deep save Sheridan for me we do never find out where is Sheridan this week. No, the... we don't see any Sheridan this week. We don't see any Sheridan this week. I don't. I don't know when we'll see Sheridan again. I just know when we I see her. I forget how we how we see her or how yeah. she got out. I mean, obviously she's she's still part of the cast, so we know she comes back. It's yeah. Passions. Yeah. Spoiler alert: die. she's not dead. <laughs> She's fine. Um, so they they pull him, they bring Aqu Aquaman ashore, and he's unconscious. Yeah. Teresa sees that it's Louise. She's out of her mind with grief, of course. And she of course. Yells, somebody get a doctor, get a doctor. And I'm like, call an ambulance and get this man to a hospital. Which once yeah. the doctor does show up, the doctor comes and which we actually get a black doctor. Uh, no, no, nobody else on this island is black, but we at least they did make the doctor black. Yeah. Um, so he comes in. And the resort normally will have medical personnel. Yeah. Cause it's places, a resort, you need to have medical. Yeah, places like that usually have like a, some kind of medical place, which take, I'm, surely there's like a whole place in this resort where you, like a clinic or something like that, but whatever. The doctor comes in, he's like, we need to get him to a hospital. At this point, Luis wakes up, y'all, Luis wakes up, he's like, fuck a hospital. I need to go find Sheridan. And we just let him. Everybody just lets him. Everybody's just like, they're just like, yeah, sure, you were on a boat that exploded an hour ago. And yeah, sure, there's a hurricane coming in. But sure, let's just take a boat out into the, the middle of the ocean again. Mm -hmm. They just let him. And like Teresa, yes, he's girl. Aquaman. And then we don't even give the man at least a shirt. Not that I'm complaining, because I mean, if Passions wants to take the shirts off the guys, I'm for it. But he might suffer hypothermia. Could you get him out of the wet clothes? He looks good for a man who has just been through the most harrowing experience of his life. He looks damn and good. And that is a soap trope. People can have brain surgeries, fires, acid thrown on them, but they still look perfect. This man was in a boat that was blown to smithereens. He has a cut on his head. That, that, <laughs> and that is it. 
that, that is, is it. it. No, he's glistening. He looks good. They he looks fantastic, actually. Um, so I guess that's why we're supposed to believe like he's fine and we shouldn't take him to the hospital. But you know what? You can look really good and have internal bleeding. It happens. He to should have all water in his lungs. <laughs> he was breathing water for three hours. Maria, he shouldn't be moving. That man, every bone in his body should be broken if he's still alive. He was exploded on a boat. Like, there should be shrapnel in parts of his body. He should be mangled, okay? <laughs> he yeah. should be mangled. Oh, yeah. But he looks good. He looks really good. So, hey. oh, Lord. So what happens next? You tell me, because I... <laughs> So the only thing I have after that was my only real Chad and Whitney comment was when they start talking about, because Chad, of course, is like, I'm going to go with Louise. And of course, then Ethan's like, well, I'm going to go too. So then all the girls are worried about the guys. And that's when Chad is like, so you saying you're worrying about me? Yeah. And she's like, of course I'm worried about you for Simone. And he's like, man, screw you, man, girl. <laughs> like, that's his, no, that's exactly right. You know, and then, you know, he walks away and then she's like, yeah, of course I worry about you for me. Okay. I wrote, Chad and Whitney have a sweet moment, but an but Whitney makes it annoying. <laughs> she does. She's, so she's like, yeah, I care about you because of Simone. Um, we, I do want to say that amid all this chaos that Ethan asks Teresa, he says, you were going to say something to me when the, when, when all of this happened, when we stopped the wedding, what was it that you wanted to say? And he says, and she says, oh, I just had a terrible feeling that something was wrong. I mean, that's a good, it's a good, I mean, it's great. She had an intuition, a sister's yeah. intuition that something was wrong with her brother. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy that. Charity for a moment. I'll buy that. <laughs> and um, so, yes, Ethan and Chad decide that they're going to go with Luis to um, go and help try and find Sheridan in this hurricane. And at this moment, man, I will say for... What I'm going to give to Passions on this, they created a lot of atmosphere around this. It was, it felt very chaotic and they had like the lightning going and the thunder and it's starting to like sprinkle and there's a little bit of rain and moisture. It's windy. It really looks like a really, a really bad storm is coming and it's yep, dark rocking. and, and, um, uh, it is at this point, Ethan says to Julian, he's like, what are you going to do? Your sister's out there. Like, shouldn't you be calling someone? And then that's when Julian's like, Basil. And he, because Basil and Joan are just lurking around. And so he calls Basil over and he's like, hey, Basil, I'll pay you double. And he, of course, Ethan doesn't hear this. I'll pay you double yeah. to take these guys out to, to see with you and to look for Sheridan, quote, quote. Um, hint, hint, wink, wink, but make sure that they don't find her. And so Basil's like, you got it, Julian. Got it, Mr. Crane. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, because Julian, when it was funny because when Ethan, and Julian wasn't wrong, actually, when Julian was not wrong, I'm going to tell you what, what I mean when I say that. When Ethan says to Julian, like, what are you going to do about this? Like, you should be sending out a search crew. You should be going to find, that's your sister, yada, yada, yada. Julian says, there's a hurricane coming in when I'm going to risk more lives. Like, I hate that this has happened to my sister, but like, I'm not going to risk my life and other people's lives to go mm -hmm. and try and find her. Fair enough, Julian. Fair enough. I mean, you've been making some good points here in Bermuda. Listen, I'm going to be real, real, all the way real with y'all. The boat exploded in the middle of the open ocean. It is a miracle that Luis made it back, number one. So I, if I'm on shore and there's a and there's a hurricane coming in, a big storm, no, we're not going out there. No, no. I hate it for Sheridan. I hate it for her, but that that's how the cookie crumbled. That is the way the cookie crumbled. What are we supposed to do? So these, yeah, yeah, these guys go out into this storm. It's horrible. Rain's pouring down and the ships are rocking back and forth. And no, they don't find Sheridan. No. They don't and find then, Sheridan. He, here's another critique, funny passions thing. They all left. Why are they outside getting drenched in the rain, the leftover onlookers? Like, why is Teresa and Whitney... 
And why are they in the ring? Why can't you go back inside? Why are you outside? What are you? What do you think you're gonna see? You can't see them out at sea. You it's can't dark. see them out there. It's yeah, it's dark, and they're far, far away. Again, they were out in the middle of the open ocean. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I didn't I, get that. I'm like, why are you guys outside? I, I Go think ahead. It was, it's raining out. It was just for, the, just for the vibes, I guess. I, I don't know why they did that. Let us know that it is raining and there's a hurricane coming. There's a hurricane a coming. Um, so that's it for that storyline. They have not found Sheridan. Ethan and Teresa did not get married. Um, but and, and Julian Jean... told Basil, could you just throw Aquaman in? <laughs> but... <laughs> like, it would help that if like he didn't come back. Yeah, I mean, oh, you know what I do want to talk about with the Sheridan and Louise and Julian blowing up the bomb, blowing up the boat yeah. storyline. My one main critique of this is. Julian believes that sh this plan, his plan was for Sheridan to definitely die and for Luis to maybe die. But like, given what Lu Luis has just been through, which is his boat exploded, do you think he's not gonna do an investigation on what happened? What, exactly. what And do you not think that's gonna lead him straight to you? Do you not think you're gonna be suspect number one it was so weird that you were here they were weird they were like why are you here julian and you were like oh i'm just here to get divorced mm, doesn't it again doesn't pass the smell test so no. julian's whole plan with thinking that Lu he's gonna get Luis off of, like this was his way to get Luis off of his back it's all it's only gonna make Luis more of like a rabid rabbit for the truth right like yeah. i just but like, will anyone really want to believe that he's capable of killing his own sister? It doesn't matter what you want to believe. What matters is what is the truth. And everybody, the thing is, everybody already knows how horrible the cranes are. And a lot of them yeah. say, I wouldn't put anything past them. And on top of that, he already did that whole scheme with the imposter. Like, that was a lot. That was that a is also lot. True. And one thing that a, a cop such as Luis should know is that criminals always escalate. So this is just the next ex escalation of like Julian's like whacked out mind is yeah. he, he didn't get what he wanted. So now it's like, well, I guess I have to kill you. He's suspect number one. He will be suspect number one. So the fact that or he- Or at least number two, is... because they would more easily think Alistair would have done it. The only thing with Alistair is that Alistair is out of sight, out of mind, right? We don't see him as much. We don't, de they don't deal with him as much. So of course, Julian and Alistair are connected. So I'm sure that he, where, where is Ju where I find Julian, I find Alistair, right? Where I find fault with Julian, I find fault with Alistair. So I, I, I would say I'll connect those two together. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But, okay, mm. let's move on. Yes, let's move on to... Oh, Lord, y'all. Troubled marriages. Grace is oh. out of her mind. Grace uh, is out of her mind. Grace has lost it she, officially. I, I couldn't. I couldn't with Grace. I couldn't. Grace mm -mm. is... I. Oh, let's just talk about it. I, I. Grace is extremely frustrating this week. Just So just brace yeah. yourselves. Um, so, <clears throat> Grace has asked David to stay. A reminder, David was ready to leave. Hank had convinced him that he was making things worse and um, that he was making life harder for Grace and making her sad and that it would make more sense if he really loved Grace and that if he really wanted her to be happy, it would make more sense for him to just go on about his business and go back to his life. <clears throat> and David was about to leave. David was like, you know what? You're right. I want Grace to be happy. But then Grace says to him, no, David, uh, don't leave. I need you to stay. I want you to stay. Huh? Yeah. So then. She makes no sense. Privately, separately, we pick up on these in these episodes where Sam is questioning, Gr questioning Grace about why she wanted David to stay, stay. Why she asked him to stay. He says he was on his way out the door. Why would you ask him to stay? 
And um, she says, I can't let him leave with this dark cloud hanging over our marriage. And Sam says, David is the dark cloud. <laughs> yes. So Sam's on 10 for all of these episodes. Like he, he, he every line that, that um, James Hyde delivered was just, he, this man's fed up. <laughs> He's like, David is the black cloud and he was on his way out. Why did you do that? And Grace says, well, he has a marriage. He has this marriage license. And until I know if he's lying or not, I don't want him to leave. And this is when David butts into the conversation. Now, here's a question. Where were, where were they? Because they started out at the end, but then it looked like they were in Tabitha's house. I think they were, they, they were at the end the whole time. Oh, okay. I feel like that set looks like Tabitha's house. Uh... It does, but I think like when David end. walked in with his like bag, I was like, where is he go? Like, is he staying at Tabitha's house now? But I guess it was the end. But yeah, it, it looked like Tabitha's end. house. Yeah, um, they were at the end. So David butts in and he says um, that do, he's like, do you believe that you and I were married now? Um, and he says, I want to hear it from you. You believe you believe me that we were married. And um, Sam like speaks up for grace i will say one of the things that i really dislike about this storyline that i wish grace herself would speak up more about is this language of possession between sam and david where she's never really speaking up for herself in like choosing because she should be able to choose right yeah but and I think Sam definitely does it more than David, but that's, I think that's only by virtue of the fact that Sam has the most recent quote, quote claim to grace. Right. Yeah. But there's this, him speaking for her and then him saying like, you know, later on, he's like, you're going to jail for kidnap kidnapping my wife. And it's like, here's the thing though. He kidnapped grace regardless of whose wife she was. He kidnapped her. Whether he was, whether she's married to him or not, he still kidnapped her. You can be kidnapped yeah. by a person you married. That is yeah. a thing that can happen. Yep. So there's a lot of this language in in this week, and I, yeah. So anyway, uh, Sam speaks up and says, um, obviously she doesn't believe that the two of you were married. She's just confused. And David says, no, no, no. I want to hear it from her mouth. And that's when she says, well, I just can't ignore this. I, we have to confront this whole thing. Like we, we have to meet it head on. Fine. You know what? Fine, Grace. I, I will concede that it would be weird for you to just let David walk out the door. But you know what David says? He says, well, you know, I can, I can write you a letter <laughs> with all the things, all the things I know. Cause Grace is like, I, I need to know, you know, I have so many questions about our life together. She doesn't accept that. Sam then like appeals to Grace and is saying, you know, you're married to me. We have three beautiful children together. You are now, you're not married to him. And she says, but what if I am? That would make me a bigamist. Oh. Girl, she's Girl. so annoying. That would make she's... me a bigamist. Girl, there's no court that would consider you a bigamist, dummy. You're a dummy. That's what you are. You had am you have amnesia. You don't remember this marriage. It makes no sense. There's actually a point where David even says, I've been looking for you and I've never imagined you would have had amnesia. Girl, shouldn't that give you pause to go like, well, then maybe you left for a reason? Right. That's my thing, too, is like, how in 20 years did this man not? OK, wouldn't he think it was odd that he found Grace and she didn't recognize him? Why did he not cons even consider that that was because she had amnesia? Right. Mm -hmm. Like he assumed like I think he thought she was faking it, I guess. I don't I don't I don't understand, David. But it makes no sense because even. So if like you wake up and your spouse is gone and supposedly missing persons report that we never saw, the other logical conclusion is she left you. Mm -hmm. She don't want to be with you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean the last thing you would expect is that she had amnesia? You would hope that's the first thing she has. 
Because that would mean she left them for her own volition. (laughs) (laughs) We'll say it till I'm blue in the face. I will say it until I can't say it anymore. To me, if I were Grace, my biggest concern would be that I don't know this man and he doesn't have a missing persons report for me. He didn't report me missing to the police. If he didn't report me missing to the police, that tells me that there's a possibility that I was running from him, right? If he didn't want to report it to the police, the only thing, the only logical reason I can think of is that he was guilty of something towards me, right? Cause until you so until you show me a police report that you uh, reported me missing in whatever year it was, what was twenty years before two thousand one? I don't even I can't do math. Eighty one. Until yeah. you until you uh, show me a police report from nineteen eighty one, forget it, forget it, forget it. There's nothing you can say to me that's gonna make me want to come back to you because as far as I'm concerned, you were bad news bears. I don't know exactly. what it is that went on b- we- between us. And what if whatever went on so badly between them was so bad that she blocked it out and that's why she doesn't remember it. Exactly. And we've already established that with Sam being a cop and he, when he found her, he did go looking for missing persons to figure out who she was because she didn't even know who she was. So we Mm -hmm. already know that Sam did the due diligence in trying to figure out who this woman is. Couldn't find who her sister was. Couldn't find anything because he didn't even have a name. Yeah. And she only knew that it was Grace because it was a name in a pocket, right? That's how they figured out her name was Grace. Which, mind you, Grace could be a, a regular, like, why would you even think that's a name? That's the that was one of the funniest revelations from the earlier episodes that they na- that her name is Grace because they found a a singed piece of paper in her pocket that said Grace and that's all it says so they decided to name her Grace and I just that just <laughs> but it turned out it to be her, been her a Bible name. page it could like I mean granted her sister's name is Faith so they have these sort of biblical type names but that could have just been the word like that could have been a sentence of like by the grace of god you know like it's just how many pieces of paper do you walk around in your pot with in your pocket that have your name on it also true why would you write down your own name and it's in your pot like like okay people you can't carry your id you know so they might find your id you know maybe a credit card debit card with your name on it a piece of paper in your po- just in your pocket that has your name on it. Weird, so weird, <laughs> so weird. So weird. But and it turned out to really be her name. That was the thing. Because I was like, yeah, I was like, this could be anything. This could be a piece of paper that it just says Grace. Like it could be anything. But it turned out to actually be her name, which is hilarious. But um, yes, back to back to uh the the present of Grace, this idiot. Yeah. So um. Sam is begging Grace to tell David to leave. He's begging her, like, be here with me in the present, like, me with the kids. This is your, this is your life. This is your truth. Grace says, I, you know, and to her credit, this makes sense. She says, I have finally found and met someone who knows me or knew me before I lost my, my memory. And maybe he can help me or make me remember that is a perfectly fine, reasonable thing for this woman to say. I will yeah. not fault doesn't Grace. Doesn't mean for... you still have to be married to him, though. It doesn't, and it doesn't mean you have to have gnashing of teeth and so much angst about, am I married to him or am I married to Sam? Am I a bigamist? Am I? All uh, it, no, ma'am. You can really just get get to know this man and try to pump him from for information about your past and still continue to be in the life that you actually know but whatever because she goes further she says that and which i agreed with and then she says that she can't just let david go she has to ask him so many questions and she has so many questions about her past we have to talk he says well and this is when he says well i'll write you a letter and i loved i loved this he was like i'll write down everything i know about you i'll send it to you i'll give you my my um 
contact information. He says, I'll always let you know where I am. So from time to time, so that you can, if you have any questions, you can reach out and ask me questions. And um, she says, well, what if I have more questions? Girl, the phone. The, ever heard of it? Little mm -hmm. invention? Alexander Graham Bell? Exactly. The telephone? You could call that. You could literally call him. It's 2001. Why are you acting like he's going to go? Off? It's the 16th century. He's going to go off and you're not going to know where he is exactly. or be able to contact him ever. He can literally give you a phone number. She's so ugh, yuck. Uh, She's yeah. so yuck. And honestly, at this point, if I was Sam and I know he like loves his wife and he wants to keep his he's worked really hard to like maintain this marriage and this marriage is forever. They have kids. They have a family and he loves Grace. I get it. But for me, at this would, and as far as long as it's been kind of going on, and the way she has like really been pushing to keep David physically there, it would definitely give me pause. It would definitely give me like, you know what? Maybe Grace is not the one. Maybe I should. Maybe Grace is not the one. Maybe I should yeah. be with Ivy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know. Well, me not so much. I gotta be with Ivy. Because nah, Sam yeah. does value, you know, being truthful and all. And we already know that Ivy's lied to him and everything about the yeah, kid and stuff. That's true. So, like, let's not, like, immediately, I'm going to go to I as if there's no other women in harmony. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right. But you're right. Grace Beth is not ben. the one. We'll go with Beth, No, <laughs> I did want to know that I need to at least mention. There was a point where David gives Grace the sketch, which I have to say, thank God it wasn't done by Frank Lomax. Hello, <laughs> yes! <laughs> What a good callback, because that Frank Lomax one was hilarious. But yes, was he so did a good, good job with the sketch. It was a gorgeous sketch, but I love Sam, because he turned around. He's like, don't you go packing. <laughs> <laughs> don't you have a bag to pack? Don't you have somewhere to go? Don't you have something to be? Somewhere to be? Some pictures to take? <laughs> it was Sam like, hates. you gotta go. You gotta Sam go. He's like, don't you got packing to do? Stop giving my wife pictures. Sam hates David, but uh, yeah, David does not leave. Um, he, she wants him to stay. So he says, well, he says he's leaving and Sam's like, this shit killed me. This killed me. This, oh my God. David is leaving. He says, no, I'm going to leave because I can't stand to see you in so much pain, Grace. And then Sam of all people who should have let, kept his mouth shut at this moment, says, see, Grace? Well, that's your proof right there, the proof you needed. How can a man walk away from a woman he supposedly loves so much? I wrote that in my notes. I'm like, Sam, shut up. Sam, this man is doing your work for you. Be quiet. Let him leave. Just shut, just shut up. Just shut up. But he didn't. And that's when David <laughs> gives this lovely, a very lovely speech. He's like, um... You don't get it. I'm walking away so that she'll be happy. I'm sacrificing my own happiness for hers, even though it's killing me. I mean, it's a lovely sentiment. It's a lovely it is. sentiment. It you is. know, it is it, making it, Sam look bad. It makes Sam look very bad. Sam, Sam doesn't need a lot of help looking bad the, in these episodes. Like he, I mean, he looked good. Yo, but he never he, look, he never bad. physically looks bad, you know. <laughs> mm. He looked that man is fine. Oh, mm. <laughs> wait till we get to him building a house. I don't understand Almost why he didn't do his shirtless. Listen, I'm but to, hey, I'm here for it. Listen, we about to get there. So yeah, um, he David says that you know it's killing him. Um, he says that he'll write her a letter and she tells him to stay and he bids her a fond fa farewell. I hope you ha all live happily ever after and have a lovely li life with your husband and kids. And um, David is headed out the door again. And Grace stops him and says, you can't leave. I need closure. I need resolution. And she says, if David leaves, then I'll always wonder if I betrayed my vows to another man. And then she says, and every time that I take commun communion, I'll be committing sacrilege. If we don't resolve this, I'll never be happy in my life again which of course prompts david to stay 
Obviously. I'll never be happy in my life again if I don't figure this out. What is there to figure out? It's what I'm like, figure out. The marriage part goes, get it annulled. Get yeah, it annulled. That's it. I, I, I do think it's grounds for annulment. I really do. I really do. At least go down that path before you start like spinning out about like I'm um, committing sacrilege and this and that. At least try and get an annulment first. Yeah. But whatever. Um, so then this is when we jump to later on in the night where Hank and Sam are both shirtless and building a house from the ground up. Let's He's say, not just a cop. He's a carpenter. He's a carpenter. Okay. He's a man. He was mm. using a power saw. Okay. Mm. He was using like one of those, what do they call it? A circular saw. He yep. was cutting wood, hammering things. I, listen, as a poor millennial, <laughs> as a poor single straight millennial woman, there is nothing sexier than a man who could build me a house. I'm never going to be able to buy a house, but a man who can build one from the ground up. Whew, you got me. If any of y'all out there can do that for me, come and propose. I will probably say yes. He has a steady paycheck because he's a cop and he's the chief of police. He's the chief of police, you know. I, now, me, I don't know if I want to marry a cop. That's just me, though, because, <laughs> no, the st statistics on cops and, and, like, domestic abuse is very, very bad. Like, very bad. And a lot of them get away with it because they're cops, right? Yeah. So well, we're talking it, about passions. We're talking we're about passions. Land. And I would absolutely marry Sam Bennett, even though he's terrible at his job. <laughs> and, and and he is a corrupt cop. He's corrupt, but oh, he he kind of is. He oh, chooses which laws to follow and which ones not to. He has watched TC damn near murder, and I do mean murder, Julian, two times. And both times he was just like, "Hey, man, can't be doing that." <laughs> <laughs> He didn't, he didn't he didn't even like he didn't even pretend to arrest the arrest tc he didn't even fake it fake some paperwork or anything he was just like hey in front of everybody he was like hey you can't do that don't do that come on tc come on man <laughs> if you kill him i'm gonna have to arrest you it's like but he attempts the murder and that's fine <laughs> okay. yeah that's yeah, great. his boy yeah he's gonna but, look out for his boy but y'all, these two men, Hank and Sam, because this new Hank is fine as hell. He really is. Um, they are building this house. And it was a glorious scene. I rewound it. I'm not even going to lie. I was like, yeah. let me go back and watch him cut that. Let me see him cut that wood again. <laughs> I mean, I just love the fact that they have to work shirtless. I mean, obviously a huge safety OSHA violation. <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen, they they are not um, actual contractors, you know. They're no. just doing this. Just a couple of amateurs doing what they can, so they don't have to. They don't have to abide by OSHA regulations. No. And thank goodness no. they're, they're, they're abiding else... by passions regulations, and I'm here for it. Oh, oh God, and being look... the fact that we don't really get to talk about Gwen, resident Gwen fan, hello. Um, I will say that one of the things I really, really, really wanted back in those days was for them to give a storyline with Gwen and Hank it for a little made while. Sense. It would have made sense. I listen, I and I think we kind of touched on this a little bit in the watch party the other night, but um, my thing about passions with the Gwen, Ethan, and Teresa like triangle and how this whole thing goes on for so long. I don't like it because in other soap operas, people move, they move around. They go yes. from person to person, from person to person. And it's never like the same three people in a triangle for eight, nine, ten years, you know. That, from the beginning it, to the end. And because they might find each other, their way back to each other it, throughout the storylines, but typically they're moving from people to person to person and it's not always the same triangle for years and years and years and years and that's why i think a lot of people myself included got 
like some fatigue with that storyline. I, I definitely have gotten already gotten some fatigue about, around it because it's just like, oh my gosh, especially now, that, especially since I know what's coming with that storyline. Mm -hmm. So I, I wish that I agree. I wish that they would have given like Gwen more uh, some other love interest, at least one or two other love interests and really explored that a little bit and yeah. where she found her way back to Ethan. Same with Teresa, which they do a little, they do more with Teresa than they do with Gwen, I will say. Yeah. But, and same with Ethan. I wish Ethan would have found some other, like another woman to, what, who would that even be? It would be no it one be because Whitney. they also need him for the idiot crazy that he is. Like, yeah. I can't see him being able to attract anybody else. It couldn't be Whitney. It, it would never be Simone or and Kay and Jessica are his sisters. Yeah, that's and gross. they're all too young for him. There's like nobody his age and not Beth maybe. <laughs> like, oh my know. god, but Beth has that. That's a whole other. <laughs> that's a whole other another. Yeah, they. That's a yeah, whole they, other. I I do wish that I agree. I wish that they had given. I could definitely see Gwen and Hank doing well together for a little bit. Like, obviously, I like the dynamic of the triangle, so I want to see okay. it, but I want to see some, some, you know, because I also think that if Ethan had seen her with somebody else, maybe that would have changed their dynamic some, too. So A little bit, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, but Hank it's an and Hank... infancy type of soap opera with infancy type of storylines that didn't always evolve. I mean, Grace was trying to get Sam for almost the whole nine years, too. Yeah. You know, Julian's storyline kind of stayed within the same circles as well. Like everyone kind of like these magic and all that kind of still stayed. That they true. only really change if an actor had left, you know, like with uh, Molly Staten leaving kind of changed the Miguel and Louise storyline. But had Molly stayed, she would be trying to lose her virginity for nine, 10 years. <laughs> yeah. The, all the storylines do kind of stay the same like they're all after the same thing for like nine years yeah that's that's true that's a good point we we just would have written this show better but yeah it is what it is okay so right. oh hank and sam shirtless building a house so fine so sexy everything i wish it was mine so fine um so D Hank says to Sam that he thinks that S David, I'm sorry, Hank says to Sam that he feels that Sam should face the possibility that David and Grace are, might be married, like at least face the possibility. And Sam says, no, there's no way this man's a con artist. And he says, and I've got a plan to prove it. And he says, I called the priest at the parish where they said they were, where David said they were married and um, he's on vacation. But when he gets back, we, you know, I'm going to take them to Hartford and have him ID them in person. Well, then Sam gets a phone call from the priest named Father Mike. And Father Mike says, hey, man, I got your I got your message. It sounded urgent. I just so happen to be on my way to Harmony because I'm a lobster junkie. I love lobster. And I hear the lobsters in Harmony are great. So he's in Harmony for lob for the lobster shack. And <laughs> it's That's it's not the one famous. that burned down, right? No, that was Burger no, the Hut. Bur the Burger Hut. <laughs> Teresa burned down the Burger Hut. But <laughs> yeah. the lobster shack. No, he's there to do some some, I guess, lobster fishing. I don't know. But um he says, you know, I I can I can meet you tonight. What what do you need? And Sam says, Great, I need you to ID a couple, blah, blah, blah. So he goes to Sam and Dave. I mean, he goes to Grace and David and tells them, We're going to the church and get your shoes on. We're gonna get this all straightened out for once and for all. So they go to the church. Um uh, before the, before they go to the church, Grace does have a conversation with Eve. So we do get an Eve episode. I mean, a little bit of Eve this episode. And she mm -hmm. actually does go with them to the church. So that was nice. We actually got to see Eve this episode. But she just recaps everything to Eve. It's not important. Um, yeah. So then they go to the church. And um, Father Mike comes out looks at the two of them sam says do you remember remember marrying these two people at saint agnes's or something like that at saint agnes's 
uh, 20 years ago. They never have any specific dates, but 20 years ago. Yeah. The guy looked, the my, father Mike's like, I've never seen these people before in my life. <laughs> yeah. He's like, and he's immediately like, no. Sam pulls out the handcuffs and is like, you're under arrest and I'm reading you your rights. Yep. You're done. He's like, he's like, I don't know these people. Um, I don't recognize him. Uh, and uh, that's when Sam's like, that's it. And Grace like, it, it's not over for, she says it's not over for her and David. She's like, this isn't over just because he couldn't ID us. Um, and she says she can't be a, a hundred percent over it until she's a hundred percent certain that she wasn't married to David. This is when Eve does step in and says, she says, Grace, be sensible. <laughs> <laughs> Which I loved that line. Grace, be sensible. Um, she says, Father's, Father Mike's name is on the marriage license and he doesn't remember you marrying you. So obviously somebody forged his signature. And Sam says, exactly. And that's when he says, you're under arrest for, ki the ch and he says, the charge? Kidnapping my wife. Again, it's kidnap. He should not have ever been let out of jail. Exactly. When you arrested him the first time for the kidnapping. No, and then um, he also wants to then play judge and says, here are your choices, jail or just leave Harmony. When are you a judge? He also, that also was bullshit because he says it and literally gives him 0.1 second to think about it. <laughs> He's like, prison it is. Yes. Here are your choices. You can either go to jail or you can get on a plane out of town. All right, you're going to jail. Like it was like yes. that fast. <laughs> Time's up. What time? You didn't give me any time to think. Um, so Grace is unhappy with the fact that David is getting arrested. Um, Sam says to her, what more proof do you want, woman? What more proof do you want? Which here's the thing. I'm actually, I'm actually with Grace on this because it's been over 20 years. This man, just because somebody doesn't recognize you, can't ID you, doesn't mean that, that it didn't happen. He, mm -hmm. we don't know anything about this man's mental state. We don't know anything about like his memory, what he, how could he, and he's probably married a ton of people in his career. How's he supposed to remember one couple? You know, exactly. I, I, I don't know. So, um, so I'm actually with Grace a little bit on this, um, yeah. like saying like, and, no, and this doesn't actually prove anything. that proof that Sam needed? I mean, I yeah. will give credit to great to to Sam. He wasn't even in uniform, but that man carries around his cuffs to handcuff mm. at any moment. Mm. I like a man mm. that's prepared. Mm. Mm. It <laughs> does make you make you wonder what's what's yeah. Sammy up to, right? You mm -hmm. um, could come played. over to my house, cuff me up a little bit, see what just see what happens. Let's take Chris me. <laughs> <laughs> Spread them. No. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, Grace is upset that he's whatever. What proof do you want? Uh, David then appeals to the priest about like, no, remember there was a side chapel with a little angel and Grace wanted to be married there. Like try to remember she was wearing a simple white dress and a white brimmed hat. And the priest is like, sorry, sorry, bro. Still don't remember. And um, then Sam starts to cart David off to jail. And that's when Father Mike uh, looks at Grace as she's walking away. And he says, oh, was your hair always this color? And, and I, it was so funny because immediately I was like, how would she know? <laughs> how could she possibly know? No, and but she, before she, that, wait, you're skipping a whole thing. What did I skip? He said that he was going to ask the priest something and he whispered the story to grace first about the bandage on the that's finger. after this oh that was that's after, after okay this. sorry because yeah, what happens because what happens is he the they're about to leave the priest notices like as sh as that girl grace is walking away he i guess she he kind of starts to recognize her a little bit he says was your hair always this color and she says I don't know, beats the hell out of me. I have amnesia. And that's when David's like, no, she was blonde. And then the um <laughs> and then um the guy, the the Father Mike, sorry. Father Mike says, Oh yes, uh your hair was the color of a an angel in a Leonardo da Vinci painting. Calm down. Calm down. 
And yeah. uh, David says, yes, she, she tried to, remember Grace, you tried to dye your hair for our wedding, but it turned out badly. That's why we stopped to get a, a hat on the way. And we used to always joke that we got married by a hair, remember? And um, then Sam's like, the only thing happening here is that you've tricked the priest into believing that he he married the two of you. And then that's when David says, I have another question for the priest. And he whispers into Grace's ear saying, OK, I'm going to tell you this. The day of our wedding, a cat scratched you and then you put a bandage over your ring finger. And when I tried to slip on the finger, I mean, slip on the ring, it wouldn't fit. So then David says, so priest, it's oh, nobody heard that but Grace. Uh, Father Mike, do you remember anything else? Remember something maybe about Grace's hand, her ring finger. And that's when the priest is like, yes, yeah, she had a scratch. She had a Band-Aid and you couldn't put the ring finger, the ring on her finger. Bing, bang, boom. All is lost. Sam, I think at this point, Sam, Sam even is like, this is it. It's, it's over. That, yeah, yeah, that, that proves That is a lot that of details. It. It's so many details. There's so many details. I mean, the, the greatest of which is that Grace puts tea in her honey, which she did mention to Eve in these episodes, which is another reason I skipped over it. But it's, Grace puts tea in her honey. So, of honey. course. No, he. There's so many details. He. I mean, the marriage certificate, the marriage, like the marriage license. Then the marriage was registered with the church. She's got the the scar on her foot. The um, the she cocks her head to the side when she reads. It was something else. The the tea and the honey. Um, fa he knew about faith. He knew the she was going to Boston. The, the honey and the tea. You said the tea and the honey. I just oh. thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? I was like what the honey. Tea and the honey. No, I mean, no, if she um, was putting tea in her honey, that's no a good that. one. That would be a good one. Um, he knew about faith. He knew about the angel girl. He knew that she yeah. got she had powers. He he had. I so would have been sold with knowing about the angel girl thing because that's supernatural yeah, no. stuff at that point. No, that is the point where I was like, yeah, th this, there's no getting around David. David is inevitable. <laughs> like, because even Sam doesn't believe Grace when it comes to the angel girl stuff. He's always just like, you're tired, take a nap. Yeah. Um, but Sam, like, I'm not Sam, but David remembered and like, I, it seems that he believed. He was like, you always used to get these premonitions and you had these powers and your mom told you about them and taught you about them. Yada, yada, yada. So that's where we are with them. Huh? All right, All right. I'm talking about magic. Uh, talk about magic. Oh my goodness! I told y'all it would be a long one today, is because I had a it lot. There was a lot to talk about. There was a lot to talk about. Um, okay, Charity. She's just getting a lot of useless visions, as always. Useless. What else is new? The most useless what else power is new? She's on the show. You've said it before, and I totally concur. They're useless. What is she gonna do? Oh, Teresa's in trouble. Oh, Sherry and Leaf about to blow up. Okay, well, can you get me a phone? Like, how does, what? How does that help us, though? Like, my thing about Charity is she never has any inkling about what like she yells at the beginning of these episodes. We're never getting off this island. We're doomed. We're never getting off this island. We're doomed. How? Why? Who? What? When? What? Like something like even in. Have you ever seen That's So Raven? You ever seen That's So Raven? Okay. No? Okay. There's a show that used to come on Disney Channel called That's So Raven. And Raven Simone plays Raven, obviously. And she gets psychic visions into the future. She sees oh. something into the future, right? And then she comes back. And if it's a good thing, she's like excited about like this great thing's going to happen to me. And then she does everything she can to make sure that thing happens, which oftentimes like messes things up. But then if it's a bad thing, she's like, we have to stop this, right? Okay. Charity is getting these visions of like all of their skeletons. She knows it's going to happen, but she doesn't, have, doesn't have, get any information of the sur of the surrounding um circumstances. So it's just so incredibly unhelpful. And so at the if it were me, it's like, yeah, okay, we're all doomed. This is what I'm seeing. What do we need to do to avoid this from coming? And she to, doesn't explain what she's seeing. She's just making these statements that we're all going to die. Okay, well, what are you sucks. seeing? Uh, you know, she she's not sucks. saying, oh, I'm seeing us in bones as if we've been here forever, which I will have to say, Passions, I give you I give you props. You made Timmy 
have hay in his body. Because <laughs> at first I was like, put bones into me? No, it's hay. He's he's he, a scarecrow and you see yeah. hay. It's perfect. Because like, it wouldn't make sense if I have a skeleton. He's a doll, right? Yeah. But, but also, it is why fun. would he that have died? Detail. He's a doll. He's a doll. That's a good point. Why would he have died? Wouldn't he have just gone? That is hilarious. They uh, did. <laughs> unless he's only alive because of Tabitha's magic. And if she's not around, he stops being a doll. A living doll. But even doll. then, she's, but he would just stop living. But she sewed him together physically. He's a physical, he, he's clothes. Like, he's kind of like their clothes don't turn into something yeah. else, right? So that yeah. he's made of fabric. Why You're absolutely right. Why would he, why would he turn into a pile of hay? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, gosh, you got so many. You saw so many details that I missed. Okay, <laughs> so shared not Sheridan. My goodness. Well, she's screaming about Sheridan. She talks about Sheridan yeah. being Sheridan and Louisa dead. They're all, it's done for them. To, to, it's too late for Teresa. Miguel is trying to calm her down. He's saying, "Don't worry. We're gonna light this pyre up, and um, we'll be back to harmony in no time. Don't you worry." And just a reminder, they built up this thing that they're going to set on fire so that a passing ship will see them and rescue them off of this, off of Warlock Island. So, <clears throat> Simone then, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, yes, okay. Simone is like fighting with Kay, telling her, if Kay, if Charity's premonitions come true, then it's all your fault, Kay. Um, and I would, I would say, I would posit that is also Simone's fault because why didn't you stop her or at least mm -hmm. say something to somebody else about what she had done or what she was planning yeah. to do? You know, so I would say, cause I don't know. I just wouldn't be able to let my friend just strand us on an Island on purpose. The Russell I just sisters are always there to be judgmental, but not actually do anything to not facilitate I mean what they should I will be doing. give them credit they at least are loyal to their friends they don't rat their friends out but at their own yeah. detriment because girl exactly. I love you to death you're my best friend but I'm not trying to die for you because exactly. you're trying to get laid they are loyal to a literal fault right like this is very not good for you anymore right like you got to look out for yeah. yourself at some point uh so uh, she says Simone says uh -huh. I'll never forgive you if we don't get rescued. If the, if nobody ever finds us, doesn't matter if you forgive her or not. If y'all are stuck on this dead. island, it doesn't. It literally doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, meanwhile, Charity is continuing to have these very intense visions, and she's yelling, "We're never getting off this island. We're never getting off this island, Miguel." And then Miguel finally is like, you know what? It's time for us to light this thing up. It's, it's dark enough. They'll be able to, the, the ship should be passing by soon. Let's set it on fire. So they go over to light the thing. And of course it does not light because it is soaking wet. And they realize that it's soaking wet. And then they sit there and they're like, what the hell happened? Him and Reese, it's Miguel and Reese. They're like, what happened? Why is this thing soaked? And this part was so silly. What's up? Did did you not notice how they lit the match? No. Reese used his teeth. Gross. He literally <laughs> was like, Can and lit it that? with his teeth. Really? He did. Maybe that's. I wonder if that's on like that actor. I wonder if that's one of his like special skills on his resume. Can light matches with my teeth? They didn't show it getting lit. They just see that he puts the match into his mouth and teeth and kind of flicks it. And then all of a sudden he's holding a match. I did. Again, you picked up on so many details that I just missed because I did not see that at all. Because if I had seen it, I would have been like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, what? I, was like, I had to rewind. I was like, did he just like that with his teeth? Yes, he did. He lit it with his teeth. Wasn't he like a scout or something? And that's why he was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. And I'm a scout. Do they I teach you that? How to light? A you don't have flints in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's a parlor trick. And like, it seems like it would be hard to light a match in your mouth because your mouth is wet. Yeah, no, it, it was definitely like it a parlor light. trick. Because they have a box. There's lit. You can just. Why? Yeah. Why are we showing off, Reese? Yeah. Why are we showing off? Also, at this point in 2001, shouldn't y'all have lighters and I mean, matches, but also lighters because lighters are just so much easier to use. Yeah. 
but whatever. But whatever. They came I just like, want to point that out because it was hysterical. I'm like, he uses that is that's hilarious. I had no clue that that like that's crazy that he lit the match in his mouth. God, passions. Just you, you might have to clip that and put it on your TikTok. I have to figure. I, I that's yeah. I have to figure. I think that's in this is five forty six. So yeah, I could probably find that. I have to look yeah. it up and see it for myself. Um, but yes, he. They try to light the thing. It does not light. They try to figure out, like, what the hell happened. And then they're scratching their heads. And Kay, like, walks over. And she's like, huh, oh, my goodness. She's doing, like, the worst acting. This actress is, like, doing on purpose bad acting. And it was really funny, actually. She's like, hmm, wow, gee willikers. Huh, I don't know what could have happened. But maybe the weight of the pyre was so heavy that it sunk down into the sand and then the water from the from the shore got in and got it wet and reese literally looks at her and is like basically says no sweetie that's stupid <laughs> it's like no that's dumb that's wrong and stupid you're you go back and go over there girl you girl yeah. get out of my face you're um, just a girl so, you don't know anything we're yeah. far away from the from the shoreline yeah even though every so, time they showed Charity having visions, you literally see water reflections. So I'm like, wait, how close are they to the shoreline? Yeah, well, see, I, yeah, I think they are close to the water. Like, they're on the beach so that a passing ship will be able to see them. So, like, they're close enough to the shoreline that I think it would be plausible that, like, water might make it up that far, I guess. Because you would want to do it. Close enough to the shore that the ships could see it, but far enough that the water wouldn't wouldn't get it wet, I would assume. So, yeah, eh, whatever. The Day on the beach. And the fire doesn't light. And Charity starts flipping out again. She starts getting, a, she gets a vision of Sheridan and Luis's boat exploding. She screams, Sheridan and Luis, they were in an explosion. They're gone. Then she says, didn't you all see the fire? Everyone's like, girl, what? No, we didn't see a fire. Charity's very upset. Un understandably so. She's yeah. so upset and Miguel decides you know what we need to give up on the I guess we're gonna have to give up on the boat passing by we're gonna have to stay here tonight let's go back to camp so they take Charity back to camp because she's like she's freezing she needs a blanket so they go back to camp and Charity gets yet another vision of everybody's skeletons and at this point she becomes inconsolable she's yelling all of us, every one of us is going to die. All of us. And she says um, that she doesn't, again, no useful information, just that we're all going to die. No, yes. We're all going to die. That's what it is. And she's, I mean, this girl is losing her mind. And it is at this point, <laughs> Kay, Kay is like making little jokes about her on the side. And they were honestly all spot on all hilarious like as bad as Kay is and as stupid as her plan is and how much I hate the fact that she has stranded them on this island she's not wrong about charity <laughs> like, yeah no yeah she's like I think at one point she's like oh maybe one of the maybe her alien friends are gonna come and beam her up soon or something right? like that like she's so because she is she's wackadoodle it, yeah. from any other perspective outside of like the viewers watching passions knowing what's going on if you were in this situation on an island with this girl and she just will i mean for hours at this point has been yelling about that we're all gonna die that sheridan and louise are gone Teresa is has made a huge mistake that she's gonna regret for the rest of life she, she she's in major trouble yeah, she sounds crazy. This sounds crazy. And no, I don't want to spend any time with somebody who's constantly telling me we're all doomed. That's why yeah. I don't go to church. That's yeah. why I don't go to church. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go sit in a service where somebody's going to tell me, you know, like the, the end times are coming and the, mm -hmm. you know, the rapture will come and every knee shall bow and the tongue shall confess and there's going to rain, fire is going to rain down. I don't want to yeah. hear that. <laughs> I'm not interested. And then all we have is Miguel either placating her or just telling her she's tired. Like he believes her sometimes, but then he doesn't believe her. I don't understand. Yeah, that. that's I'm so kidding. weird. It's like to her face, he doesn't believe her. But to anybody else, he's like, 
Team Charity. It's so weird. It is very weird because he, when he's talking to her, it's very much, yeah, trying to placate her, trying to keep her calm, telling her she's, you know, everything's fine, you're just tired. And to everybody else, it's almost like, well, Charity, you know, she's special. Yeah, she yeah, is. She's special, she's pretty special. Right. She's pretty special. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's especially crazy. So yeah. um, she's inconsolable. Um, Miguel finally manages to calm her down and she calmly then says, we're doomed, Miguel. We're all doomed. <laughs> Which was so funny. It was just so funny because she was so inconsolable for so long. She's yelling and screaming. We're all doomed. We're all doomed. He finally calms her down and she takes like a deep breath and she's like, we're doomed. It, it, it is what it is. <laughs> so, and so she says that and then she faints. She just passes out falls flat yeah. on her ass Fun. and Miguel thinks she's dead he's like oh my god Ch I think Charity's dead and Reese comes over and he's like no she's not dead she's just in a trance like she'll she'll be fine um then um Miguel calls over to Kay and Simone is like Kay Simone come help Charity you both were candy stripers can't you do something and um Simone's like, I just know the basics. And she runs over and she's like, yeah, no, she's not dead. She's just got like low breathing or something like that. She's like she's breathing very shallow or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but she's a lot. She is alive. Uh, Kay says she she talks about how she would be. And I mean, this is all while Charity has passed out. We think mm -hmm. she could be possibly dead. Kay's like. I would be so good for Miguel. Like she's having her own, this girl is having her own trip. She's having her own, she's on a different trip than everybody else. She, mm -hmm. Like she's basically on a different island than everybody else. Cause she's off on her, in her own little world talking about, I'd be so great for Miguel. I'd make him meals every day. I'd be so good to him. He, he would never want for anything. I'd give him sex every night. Girl, girl. <laughs> like she, she's off in her own little world. I be I would just be so good for Miguel. Once Charity's gone, he'll see. Wow. Um and and, oh, it was so funny she It was so funny cuz she was like um this is it. This is how Charity dies. Like this is the legend. She thinks that the legend that um what's his name? Reese was had told about the girl dying, the girl with visions or powers dying. Yeah, yeah. She's That's like right. it's all they coming true. on the internet and we know that everything on the internet is true. It's got to be true. I saw it on the internet. I yep. I saw it on my Palm Pilot in 2001, so it's definitely true. So he um I'm sorry. So Kay is like off on her in her own little world. She she's saying uh she has a new idea, a new way to get Miguel away from Charity because at this point Char Miguel's just by Charity's side because she's half dead. So of course he should sit there with her until she awakes up. But uh, Kay says she's got a new plan to get Miguel away from charity because now she she says, I've got all the time I need to get Miguel to be mine, to, to take him away from charity. I've said it too many times, so I'm, but I'm going to say it one more time. This is the worst plan she could have possibly come up with. This is the worst plan she could have possibly come up with. How are you supposed to find time with Miguel with chaos happening? Chaos raining down on y'all. Ch obviously, Charity is his highest priority, as she should be, because she's clearly, she seems like she's dying at this point, right? So yeah. she should really be everybody's priority and concern yeah. right now. And uh, but she's, she's like always going through crisis. Maybe people just have charity fatigue. That's true. Yeah, I got charity fatigue. I do have charity fatigue. I'm sick of her. Yeah. Um, but uh, charity, uh, sorry, Kate go says she has an idea. She's gonna get Miguel away from charity, and she says if this works, maybe charity won't even have to die. Oh, she says it so flippantly. So she goes over to Miguel and she asks him to go with her to get more firewood because he's, she's like, Charity's getting cold. Like the if the fire goes out, she's going to be too cold. Miguel is very stern with her. He's like, I'm not leaving Charity. No. So 
it is at this Which point that she tries a different tactic and she like walks away and waits for a minute and she starts to cry, which we've seen her do this before. She starts to cry very, very loudly. And Miguel's like, Kay, is that you? And she says, yeah. And he says, where are you? I'm over here. And so he goes to her and whatever it it's not important what they talk about because miguel does the miguel thing k does the k thing nothing is happening here mm. um and then they uh hear commotion from where charity was simone is yelling charity no because charity has just like lurched up like Frankenstein and yeah. she's walking slowly towards the fire where there's three Benjamin Franklin looking motherfuckers coming up warlocks. out of the fire. They're, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the warlocks, but that, that, they, they look, they're dressed like Benjamin Franklin and, but in yeah. tattered clothing. <laughs> and, um, and they're beckoning to her, come to us, Charity, join us in the fire. We can help you save Sheridan and Louise. Oh no, Sheridan and Teresa, come to us, join us in the fire. So she's walking to the fire and that's when Simone sees her and, and yells, Charity, no. And Reese grabs her and pulls her away from the fire. Miguel runs in and she wakes up because she was like in a trance. Mm -hmm. and um she explains that she can see people in the fire even though she's not in the trance anymore she can still see the warlocks in the fire yeah. and she's like y'all don't see those people <laughs> and everybody's like no girl no no take a nap at, at this point it is when i would be like go take a nap yeah go, go take it get out of here Get out so of here. Someone go get the water. Oh, we can't. Kay used it for the fire. Kay, Kay used all the water. We can't. We can't give her a cup of water. All I wrote was burn, baby, burn. Please, just burn. burn so baby, mean, burn. but I can't. And listen, I was ready for her to walk right into that fire. <laughs> I was honestly, I was kind of hoping that they would do like a Game of Thrones thing where she would get into the fire, but it doesn't harm her. Like it doesn't hurt her because she's, she's got power. Yeah, that would have been cool, but they did not do that. No. Um, so Charity is desperate to like go see these people. She's like, we need to, I need to talk to them. They said they kn knew how to help me. They knew, they said they had answers and knew th the answers to, to all my questions. And um, then Jessica, Jessica is the only person on this island who is having an appropriate reaction to what is happening on this island. <laughs> She's like, I am terrified. Why aren't the rest of you more terrified? Charity's yelling that we're all doomed. The boat that we came here on explode, like burst into flames with Tabitha on it. Charity mm -hmm. now is seeing people in the fire. Like th this is bad. What if what she says is going to come true? What do we need? Yep. Like, how do we get off this island? So then this is the point where Miguel, and I haven't talked about um, Tabitha, Timmy, and Norma, because honestly, not a whole, whole lot happens, but we will touch on that here. Because mm -hmm. at this point, Jessica, Jessica has introduced Norma into the group, right? So yeah. um, Norma is part of the whole group now, part of the island gang now. And um, so we'll talk more about that. But it is at this point that um, uh, Miguel decides... We need to find a way off of this. I, this was the dumbest. This was stupid. This was stupid. He says, we need to find a way off this island. Let's all split up and scour the island to see if we can find somebody else on the island who can help us. No, Miguel. In the dark? Yo, exactly. In the dark? No. Go to bed. Go to, stay at camp, wait till the sun comes up. Once the sun comes up, fine. Maybe go searching. I don't know what you think you're going to find, but maybe go find searching for something. 
Yeah. But go to bed at this point. And y'all should absolutely, you have no way to communicate with each other. You should absolutely not be splitting up. You have to stay together. Miguel's an idiot. I can't stand him. But they all just, they all agree with him. So they're all stupid too. And so they all disperse to like f look for stuff. Meanwhile, let's talk about Norma, Tabitha, and Timmy. Uh... Wait, but real quick, there was a point where to distract, Kay puts the moves oh. on Reese. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot about that because it was so. No, no, that's so why good. I have my notes. Because I, I, I wrote it down and I'm like, that. She took his glasses off. She took his if, hat off. He actually started looking halfway decent. So while at once everybody like disperses, right? Um, Kay is supposed to go and do what everybody else is supposed to be doing. But uh, she decides to stay behind, even though, and she like does it sneakily because she was supposed to go, but she stays. Reese is staying at camp so that he could hopefully get some kind of service on his Palm Pilot and um, find maybe send, they said send an email to somebody to get them off the island. Yeah. So and he's he staying to at camp. Watch of charity. Exactly. He's staying at camp to stay with charity and to be on his Palm Pilot and try to send an email. So um, everybody else disperses. Kay circles back to camp after pretending to go off. And she then like you said puts the moves on reese and you have tells a crush him, on her already mm, well he thinks they're dating reese That's believes right. that she's his girlfriend That's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> crazy but yeah she um she starts crying and he um offers to hug her and she's like yes just hold me and so he's hugging her holding her and meanwhile, she's looking over his shoulder at Charity, who has gone into a trance and stands up and walks off into the forest. So she's no because longer trying to walk into the forest. Once fire. again, calling to her that they have all of the, the knowledge and they say, someone's after your man. Mm -hmm. And that's when that's she really it. got interested all of a sudden. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, no, forget about Luis. Forget about Teresa. Someone's going after my man. Oh, yeah, no. She's like, Hold what on. girl? What girl? Yeah, the warlocks are telling, calling her to their cave. We'll tell you. We'll tell you. We are. We're your friends. We're your real friends. Um, come to us, and we'll help you. Uh, we will tell you so many secrets. So yeah, Kay has successfully gotten rid of Charity and and mm -hmm. sent her off to hope what she hopes is her doom. And but I, I, there's I'm visions sorry, that are helpful for someone. Listen, I got to be real with y'all about this. Even though Kay is horrible for what she is doing and has stranded the everybody on this island, yo, this particular tactic was so funny to me because I was like, you know, it is kind of a gray area. She's not doing anything to Charity. Charity's doing everything to herself. <laughs> yeah, she's letting her you be know? her own worst enemy. She's just giving Charity the freedom to destroy herself. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's a gray area for me. Like, for me, I don't know. I, but, I mean, I know it's terrible, and she is pretending no, is like she can't Because she's, terrible. like, sabot she is still sabotaging things. Yeah, no, that part of it is ridiculous, absurd, crazy. I can't, I yeah. don't understand it and never will understand it. But this portion of it with the, the getting rid of Charity portion where she didn't really do anything, she just let Charity be Charity. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yes, girl. That's th that's how you do it right there. Um, so, yes, that happens. And they they flirt and stuff. And then finally, Reese realizes that Charity has gone missing. And then he talks about the warlocks. He says that th he believes that the warlocks have returned and they're all in real trouble. And about Tabitha knowing about the warlocks and him thinking Tabitha's a witch. Yada, yada, yada. Who yeah, I didn't cares? care for his making fun of, you know, like, oh, it's the warlocks. Ooh, it's the warlocks. Shut up, yeah. please. Yeah. Stop. I, 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 I'm whatever. Um, but I was, you know, honestly, I was glad that he got a little bit of attention from Kay. Like, he's going to live on that for three years. <laughs> oh, he so will. Oh, you just gave him, you know, material for a while now. He is so happy. So, yeah. so happy. Uh, so let's, let's talk about Norma and uh, uh. Tabitha. Norma sets a trap for Tabitha. She's still. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the short of this because we've been going for a very long time. I know. Norma sets. Yeah, Norma sets a, a trap for Tabitha, 
she 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 some some foreshadowing here. She digs a pit. <laughs> she digs a pit. Oh, you jumped and... all the way to the end. <laughs> yeah, I did. I jumped to the end cuz nothing just happens. End. Nothing happens between these no. three. Like there you know, there's banter. It's it's stuff that you you know what it is? It's stuff that you have to watch. So me talking about it, it doesn't it doesn't matter because it's a sight most of it's sight gags right like yeah. most of it's yeah so yeah. um tabitha throwing rocks hitting her telling her why don't you just pull the rope oh let me just pull the rope wait but don't pull the rope because i'm about to fall and then it's running yeah. around and it's hatchet and introducing yeah that's exactly. mostly my notes it's just recapping not a lot of like side the most important thing that happens is Norma abducts Timmy. He gets Timmy. I mean, she gets Timmy by um, tricking Tabitha into putting him down. She gets mm -hmm. him. She uh, takes him away, ties him to a tree, has him yell out for help for Tabitha, lays a trap for her, a pit, digs a pit, covers the pit, and Tabitha is frantically looking for Timmy. And she runs and falls right into the pit. The yeah. end. The end. That's it. But that's a she... really deep pit. Yeah. How she dig it so fast? Like, what is she? What tools does she have besides her hatchet and a baby Bjorn and a of the skull of her father? She dig it yeah. with her dad's skull. And, and <laughs> my biggest thing was like, if she's gonna, if she her desires to murder Tabitha and Timmy, who's a doll, whatever. Why would she care that there's witnesses for a bunch of people that are stranded anyway? Like that whole thing of like, no, we got, I got to kill you in secret. Why? If you're just a murderous murderer, then, and the, what was funny in the beginning was like, oh, I got to kill you because your checkout was done incorrectly. So now you got to die because you just chuck up, checked out. Well, the checkout, the checkout process is her killing them. That so that was the thing, yeah. They, so that's her. It's, it's a euphemism. The and they something happened, and okay, no, yeah, never mind. It's a euphemism for her killing them because they checked into her hotel. People check in, but they don't check out, right? She they check in, yeah. she kills them, and that's the checkout procedure. They escaped, therefore they they went against the checkout procedure, and she has to take it. rectify it. That yeah, that's the whole thing. But well, then if she's just a murderer, then just kill the teenagers too. That's what I. Been saying you're on an, an a deserted island. They're all scattered about. Kill them one, pick them off one at a time. Yeah, I I mean, I, yeah, I I agree wholeheartedly. I've been feeling the same way about Norma. Like, why why don't you just kill everybody? There's no th then there will be no witnesses. I mean, you're a murderer after all. Exactly. You know? What do you care? If and mind you, bunch of teenagers. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, I don't know why she. I don't know. I. Uh, I'm so sick of like the Norma Tabitha Timmy stuff. To be honest, y'all probably can tell by the way that I just covered it. But <laughs> just like yeah, no, um... we spent five minutes on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it for the week. You have anything else to add before we wrap up, there, Maria? No, no. It was at the end. My last notes was that is a huge hole that Norma dug, <laughs> and it is, and is, yes, it is. So. With that, that's the whole show. Um, you can always find me on all the social medias. Check the link in the description for the Patreon, social media, email, anything. You know, just hit me up if you have any questions. Oh, also, um, we're having the Patreon Halloween party on Halloween. And we're going to play, we're going to do some different games. And one is... Passions Trivia, which, by the way, I did get your email with the crossword, which is so cool. Um, we, But if you could send me some Passions Trivia questions, you can send them any way you know how to contact me. So that's message. Send me a DM on any of the social media. You can send me an email. You can hit me up on Patreon, wherever you know where I am. Just send me a message if you have some, like, good trivia questions. Send me the question and the answer to the question. I will double check it, but I just want to gather some questions from different sources if I can. So please, please, please send me some passions trivia so we can have a good time at the party. And with yes. that, oh wait, Maria, is there anything you wanna um, tell people where to find you? They can send you an email if they wanna talk, if they wanna talk Gwen, right? 
I know, I know. We didn't get to really talk about Gwen. It's been now a thing between me and Latara that every time we're doing a watch party or talking about passions, she happens to always find episodes that do not include Gwen. Being Listen. Being Gwen. So it's it, been this running joke. And when she asked me to help host, I was like, yes, great. And the whole week, there's been no Gwen. No Gwen. But if as if you're up to it, up for it, whenever Gwen comes back, you can absolutely come back. We had a great time, by the way. Thank you so much. For, yes. Uh, listen, I know I said like we've gone long, but it's just because we had so much fun and we've been talking yes. so much. We had a lot to yes. discuss. So I had a great time. So you can you can come back anytime. Just let me know what episodes you want to be on for, and you can come back anytime. Especially, and it's I mean I need somebody to give me the Gwen perspective, okay? Yes. So and I know it's come back. unpopular. And if anyone needs to try to understand it or want to reach me, you can email me. It's Gwenfan three two nine at aol dot com. And so I will put that free. in the description. I will put that in the, the description. Gwen fan. Can y'all even believe it? Like, I just... Like, she has and I've had email. that email since the days of passions. Because at some other point, we could talk about the, the website. Yes, we will talk about all of that. But for that, for now, this is the end of the episode. Uh, so... With that, everybody, you are my passion for life.